All right. Shay, are you there? Can you hear me, brother? Kia ora, bro. What's good? Kia ora. Fuck a lot of lahi atu kia Hey, thank you, brother. Back at you. Malolo uh, nakai, bro. Eh, hey, malolo. Fuck a lot of lahi. Behind here nakoi. <laughs> the missus is no aim, bro. Just to let you know. Oh, that. hey, hey, home, home, uh, bro. I, I've got, uh, yo, I, and I'll tell you what. This is the proudest she's ever been of me. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> she was like, "What you, you, hey?" And I was like, they, "Yeah, yeah," because, bro, for years and years, I would always give her shit about. Bro, I'm sure you're, you've got to be related to Shefu somewhere, hey, honey. And she's like, "No, I'm not." <laughs> oh, Baba. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, brother, how are you being? I'm good, my G. Yeah, good. Thanks. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we had a little chat before, but thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate it, eh? Hey, pleasure, bro. Bro, they say that, like, you know, uh, when you speak to someone in their native language, in uh, Vangaho uh, Nui, you know, it's like speaking to their soul. And that's why I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm going to get it in. I'm, I'm going to make sure that I, I present myself well. Oh, thank you very much, brother. Appreciate that. All right, bro. Oh, man, I've been, uh, yo, uh, i got to be honest. Like, I, I talked to you about this. I've got a, we've got a mutual friend and uh, my good friend, Shannon. And Shannon said to me, and, and it was the, the best compliment he ever said to me. He said, you know what, Tim? Like, yeah, because I told him I'm a big Shea Fu fan. And he said, bro, you and Shay are like two peas in the pot. you got a very, very similar uh, likes and things. <laughs> I love my, I love my, uh, my, my pop culture. I love my sneakers. I love my basketball. I love my hip hop. And I heard that, and, and, and you know, like, that's you really right yeah you're right you're right shan would know bro so shout out to my man shan what's good luck uh but yeah bro uh sounds like uh we are into the same things my man yeah oh, let's get into it bro i need to know this story okay now a lot uh, this story has been documented a lot but i need to hear it from the man himself four years old 1979 brother you're on stage with bob marley get out of here brother how yeah, bro. did that happen Margie? Ah, uh, shucks, bro. Uh, that was through my mum, bro. So my mum, uh, at that time, uh, her and her friends uh, basically had a lot of, like like me, had a lot of kids, right? And so they couldn't go to the concert because it was like R18. And so uh, what she did, she uh, basically rang up the, the hotel. They were staying at uh, the Green Lane, White Heron, uh, was, which was a hotel out in Green Lane. And uh, she basically just called them up and she got a hold of Rita Mali. And she just uh, told her her story, like, you know, she wished she could come, her and her friends could come, but she can't. And so Rita Mali, being the wonderful lady that she is, she said to come up to the hotel. So uh, I can't really remember that day, but apparently I went with mum and we went up to the hotel and she got some uh, backstage party. And that's how we got into the concert. Bro, it's really, it's really funny, you know, because uh, we all call, you know, Uncle Bob. We were like, hey, Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob, Uncle Bob. But actually, you're probably the closest thing to Uncle Bob, to be honest. In my oh, life. You've yo, been there. Uh, you know it's very saying? high praise, my brother. It's very high praise. But yeah, very fortunate to go to their concert, I tell you. It's something that will always stay with me. And obviously, uh, Bob Marlin and his music is very strong in Alfano, as well as uh, many, many of our other brothers and sisters out there in the Motu. Yeah. Yeah, she told me, you know, she told me everything. She was kind of like, yeah. uh, you know, this way. Because, you know, when I'm when, when you're growing up, you know, people are playing um, No Woman, No Cry on, on a guitar. And then and then when the yeah. Fugees come out, I was like, oh, man, that's the song that my mom used to play all the time. And then, uh, and then when you put one on one together, you're like, hey, didn't you say that you, you know, like, yeah, bro, he's got such a massive. Why do you think that no he way. has such a massive uh, connection with the with the Tangata Whenua and and uh, not just the Tangata Whenua of New Zealand, but all of the native uh, kind of islands? Yeah, bro, I feel you. Yeah, indigenous people all the way around the world can relate to it. And I guess it's just because of the the themes that he was touching on in in the songs, and it's coming from a people that was taken away from their homelands brought to this place of Jamaica. And so obviously they're on the bottom rung when it comes to the economic uh, sort of side of things. And so his songs were about being uh, taken away from his homeland, uh, being oppressed. And I think uh, a lot of those themes, obviously people like ourselves, we can relate to that. And I think it struck a chord with us because the buzzy thing is brother, you got to remember that there was no advertising. There was no uh, sort of posters or any sort of radio ads for this, for that man and that type of music, reggae music. And you got to say that uh, it's definitely on the power of uh, the music itself because it's huge in the Pacific. You know what I'm saying? So 
So yeah, it's, it's definitely to the power of his, his words and what he was talking about. Man, so yeah, and even to this day, man, like you go back and you listen to just the words, like you know the music's beautiful, but you listen to the purest, the purity of the words and what he's trying to say, and you're just like, oh yeah, yeah. man, people people need to kind of understand and have more have more affi, man, have more love and and sure. aroha and and so that's uh yeah, yeah it's it's great especially in i mean this climate like this day and age of um i mean in the last couple of weeks you know with yeah, yeah. black lives matter it's, it's more important than ever to have like you know empathy and uh and stuff like that right absolutely and bob marley was definitely all about that you know he was about that struggle about uh bringing to light issues that that uh sort of we get we face as uh people because of uh of our uh, place in society and of uh, because of simple things like the color of our skin. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, obviously his, his, his music was powerful. Yeah. All right, bro. So I'm going to, I'm going to quote some stuff from, and this is from bro. This I've always thought that the, the, the intro for chains that did not get put out was the most strongest shit I've ever heard in my life. And I'm going to quote it. I never asked you to put a cafe on my street, looking at me like a, looking at me like another refugee bro and that shit is so strong and I, bro, I, like and when i first heard that i didn't understand because i was young all right i didn't understand yeah. i didn't understand the dawn raids i didn't understand what was going on the gentrification of uh ponsonby i didn't understand that but now the older i got the more i understood that and that was one like you how old were you when you wrote that oh uh i guess I would have been about uh, 19. Yeah. Just to have yeah. the, and I'll, uh, and I'll quote you, just to have the cipher, brother. Just to understand, like, holy shit, like, you know, that's so true. And, and that gentrification went on, like, stronger and stronger. And nothing got done about it. And it's very, sure. it's very relevant to today's landscape. And, um, yeah. bro, I just got to give you that. But, um, I mean, dad was, dad was the guy, right? Dad was the guy that led, I mean, put those, not put those words in, but put those ideas in. Is that a good assessment? Am I Absolutely. Correct? Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah, it was definitely because of growing up around my parents and the work that they did, that definitely sort of opened my eyes up to that sort of thing quite early. Yeah. And so it was quite widely known uh, 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 through, throughout uh, kids that grew up in that place. So th I wasn't the only one. But I guess I was one of the one of those kids that actually uh, wrote a rap about it and got to put it out as as a single. But there was many of us who grew up in that world that uh, knew about it, and uh, most definitely it was down to the work that my parents did. Uh, plus, you also got to remember I grew up in and around uh, the twelve tribes of Israel uh, faith, which was very strong in terms of uh, the music. And so I grew up in and around those sort of band rooms. So when it came to writing songs for myself, that was definitely a touchstone for me in terms of themes to write about. You know what I mean? It was quite obvious in my area, things were changing. So that definitely gave me a material to, to, to speak about because the thing was like, you got to understand that that version there about Ponsonby, that was actually the, the original version of Chains. Mm. So what happened was like, uh, when the, the big homie uh, DLT asked me to, to do a track for his album, that was the original that I did. Uh, it got to the record company and then uh, there was some issues with it, with a and or well, whoever was in power, they didn't really think that that would work in the market. So that's when we did the version that everyone else knows. But uh, on the record, uh, the Ponsby version was was uh, sort of listed as a remix. But uh, actually, that was the original. That was the original? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Man, it's kind of, uh, you know, the, 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 the man trying to, you know, keep... Uh, I mean, did you feel that way? I mean, as a 19, 20-year-old, you would have been like, bro, like, I wrote that from my heart, and you fellas want to just take it out, because... A know. little bit, but you got to understand, it wasn't my project, it was my man, <sighs> it was my bro's project, so, you know, it was for him. So I didn't mind putting in the work for whatever he needed to get done, because, like, that's the sort of relationship that we had. Uh, and so uh, you got to understand that was also the first song that I ever wrote to be commercially released and the first rap you know the first bars I ever wrote to be commercially released up until that point in terms of the rhymes that i was writing it had all been for live stuff for my uh crew uh token village and that sort of thing yeah and so it was really uh you know i was hella nervous you know what i'm saying and so i needed to find a theme that i felt was was strong enough to be uh like a first outing you know what i mean yeah because uh, i'm um, coming back to uh Pop said, uh, Tigilo was like, what was, what could you remember back with the, um, when you're growing up with the Polynesian Panthers and the movement Where? that you saw? What, 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 
springs into mind with like the first kind of oh snap i know what this is now word well a lot of meetings you know what i mean a lot of meetings there was so many uh mm-hmm. you know porphyries uh so many uh, uh meetings at marae and different sort of places as a kid i would just obviously be dragged along to these things and there'd be a lot of talking you know what i'm saying as a kid it's just talking you know what i mean but uh, i would the faces that i would see i would later on recognize as being you know real big in the scene as I got older and understood who they were in the, in the, in society, people like uh, Hone Haurewira, uh, uh, the Nga Tamato, uh, people, uh, people like Will Lahia, people like, uh, you know, people of that ilk that were in that scene, used to see them quite a lot. So I have strong memories of that. Uh, also I have a strong memory, uh, like before, uh, my father or during that period, my dad went to England. I guess in 77, 78. And so when he he left New Zealand, he had a big Afro, right? And uh, when he came back, he had dreadlocks. You know, he came back in 78, 79. And that, that always stuck with me. I was like, wow, that's, that's different. Eh? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And that's when I guess the whole sort of Rasta thing started happening. And so that's what I remember from that period of time. You know, a lot of, a lot of meetings, a lot of uh, yelling, a lot of arguments. Uh, Bastion Point, you know, I remember that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that was crazy because a lot of people obviously remember what was filmed and on the, on on the, on your sort of uh, well-known footage and that. But what people don't realize is that Bastion Point, that whole occupation was over a year. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we would go up there, you know what I mean, during the whole year. And so it seemed like quite a long time for me. And a lot of it was like basically going up to Bastion Point uh, Obviously, there would be like camps and like, you know, tents and stuff, but everyone would sit around the fire and play music and, and jam out Bob Marley songs and, and whatnot. And uh, that would happen like through the whole year. Yeah. Obviously, at the end, that's when everybody, that's when all the leo leos and whatnot happened and, and so forth. But, you know, that's also something that really uh, stays with me, you know, in terms of uh, from the period of time. Is, um, uh, so, and correct me if I'm wrong, bro. Is that the one that was like, uh, now nah, I'm not going to cut my afro off? Is that the when he was in the school? That was before that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. that was after that. That was after that. That was way after that. So, yeah, yeah. When he was going to Mag's uh, Man of the Grammar, he got asked to uh, cut his hair, which he had issues with because it was part of the new Age culture. Yeah. Also, it was also part of being a rebel. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, yeah, that was that was way before that. Cause that's bro. Even that, and any, even that story in itself is crazy, right? Like if that, especially in Nui culture, you know, with hair cuttings and things like and, and stuff like that, that stuff's just culturally inappropriate. Like, like, and back yeah. then, it yeah, was yeah. Uh, there was a lot of things that was okay, like you know, that were like well, shunned upon. But um, yeah, that was, yeah, yeah, that was indicative of the time. You know, what I mean, obviously that was that was for back then. That's why I really appreciate what my dad did because we don't have to miss with it now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That was that's that's dope. So you went to uh, what primary? Did you go to Grade Lynn primary? Primary? I went to Richmond. Richmond. Oh yeah, shit. yeah. What was it, what was life like in uh, Richmond? And uh, awesome. What's that like? Seventies, eighties? Ha ha ha! Yo, what was it seventies, my <laughs> G? Yo, <laughs> come on, bro. Eighties, uh, eighties, bro. Yeah, eighties. Yeah. Uh, mm. Richmond was awesome, bro. I loved it. It was uh, hella uh, multicultural, bro. It was yeah. just like we had the first bilingual unit, Pacific Island bilingual unit in the country. And so all the brothers and sisters were coming over straight, straight, straight to GL, bro. Uh, and uh, what I really loved, bro, was uh, was the cultural group. I was in the cultural group. Yo. And what was mean was like uh, it wasn't like the the Nguyen group, the Tongan group, the Salmon group. It was just you did it all. You know what I mean? You Yo. did the sasa, you did the drum dance, you did the haka. So I really enjoyed that aspect of the whole sort of unifying thing. It was just it was just everybody. You know what I'm saying? And then you went to Ponsby Intermediate, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. normally, like, wouldn't, like, that, I mean, you're on Summer Street, correct? So oh, sucks. The research of the Nadwa, Nadwa. That's... Oh, my man. Yeah, come, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've come to the right place, brother. My man, my man, my man. Bro, this is just the start, brother. <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yo. So, like, normally they go to Kofi Intermediate, right? Well, that, that was the traditional route from Central. Yep, yep, no doubt. That was my father's route, yeah. And then, yeah, is that why, uh, and, and like, because Ponsby Intermediate was quite new then, right? Or is it, was it, was it quite an older school? 
No, I mean, it's been there for, it had been there for a while, but it was still pretty much like an extension to me anyway of, of Richmond. It was definitely multicultural when I was there. They were definitely uh, sort of open plan teaching, you know what I mean? Definitely more into the feelings and that sort of thing, which was great, you know what I mean? And uh, it was a shocker when we went to high school, though. <laughs> yeah. Because you went to Western Springs. Was it, was, it, was it Western Springs or was it Seddon? Seddon. Yeah, yo. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Bro, um, yo. Um, was that – because – is that the reason? Was was that the reason why you didn't go to Max? Were you like, nah, fuck that? Uh a little bit, star, because uh, well, I, there was a reason because I grew up right next to St. Paul's. Obviously, yeah. if we're talking about location, I should have gone to that school. But uh, because my parents were strongly uh, Catholic, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so my parents were Rastafarian, strong, strong, strong with the Bible, and so they deterred from those types of schools. And rather, I went to a a, a more uh, modern school, I guess. Bro, what was the go-to? Because I mean, you had to catch a bus, right? From, from possibly. Yeah, the was, yeah, bro. Um, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, it was, it was buzzy, bro. It was yeah. buzzy being um, um, Maori Islander <laughs> around there, having to walk past St. Paul's, and you're not from there, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You either, you either a good fighter, bro, or fast runner. <laughs> I, I was neither, bro. Oh, I was man. neither, bro. That's why join a band with some balangis. <laughs> bro, I was the opposite, dude. I, 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 I went to JC, right? I went to JC, bro. I was even like, I had the biggest mouth on the block. I was talking bro. mad spicy shit, but bro. I had the biggest. Uh, bro, I was boys of all the fighters. I'm like, hey. Bro. So, hey, the bro. And that's, that's really where I learned my multilingual. Like, I, I, I learned. Hey, that's how you get funny, hey. You get funny. Fuck it, I'm funny. Yeah. I was like, hey. Yo. And then, especially when I started learning all the swear words from all the different cultures. And then sure. I was like, Yo. I'd say it. And then, oh, shit. That's standard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, Bye. um, catching that bus, bro. What was the go-to in the morning, bro, at the at the, at the Busy Bee? At the Busy Bee Dairy, bro? What did you oh, use to what did you use crack? Oh, you know your you know your stuff, my G. Oh, yeah, the Buzzy Bee Dairy was definitely the hub, bro. Uh, actually, next door to the Buzzy Bee was the takeaways, and that was the hub. Reason why that was the hub is because they had Street Fighter, World Warrior in there. And so for our area, that was the place, and that was like a good sort of five minutes walk from my door. And so yeah, that was that was kind of like a place, a place that we would congregate at. But uh yeah, catching the bus was always, you know, I'll tell you something. Uh like I would catch the bus. It'd be the the second bus stop on the on the route, so I'd be the the second stop at the beginning, and at the first stop, uh, a, a young lady would get on, and uh, you know we'd see each other on the bus, you know, and this this is during my high school years all throughout, and like you know, a few years later I married this lady, <laughs> yo, oh, shout out so, to by the way, right? <laughs> and so yeah, man, it was all a definitely uh, a strong Ponsonby Central uh, sort of thing, catching the bus and 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 uh, whatnot. Bro, let's be honest. You're flexing trying to get an older lady. Let's be honest. Ah, uh, yo, peace, 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 hey. peace, my G, peace. So, bro, <laughs> um, what, bro? Describe the vibe, bro. It's, describe what the vibe used to be like going into the hall, bro. Twelve tribes of uh, the the band session going on your first time, bro. What was the vibes like going? Because because there's different chapters, right? There's like the cooking. Am I correct? Like there's a cooking area, or like yeah. you know, there's people that are into cooking. There's people that are into um, music, and you obviously went there. What was the vibe like when you went first time? You signed up, and you went in there, brother. What was that like? Oh, it was a crazy experience, bro. Uh, something that I'd never experienced before or even after. Uh, so, but I mean, it might be quite similar to many other people's uh, congregations, many other people's uh, houses of worship. You know, we, we, we had structured ways of worship. And one of the, one of the things that we would do would be, uh, we put on events and we'd call these events dances and they would represent the partic particular tribe for that month. Each month represented a tribe based on the Bible and the Hebrew calendar. And so, these dances that we would put on uh, would consist of uh, a, a band, uh, reggae DJs, uh, people who would toast, which is speak on the mic, chat in Jamaican language, patois. Uh, and so this would happen once a month. And so we'd have 12 of those a year, as, as well as maybe four other sort of events on top of that. And so this went on for like a good, you know, 20 years, you know what I'm saying? And so it was crazy, bro, growing up like that. Uh, heavily, heavily Jamaican culture, 
you know what I mean? Uh, strong with that sort of style of things, Caribbean culture. Uh, and the other thing was everybody was Maori and Pacific Island, you know what I mean? <laughs> and so uh, it, was, it was out there, yo, and it was me. Because you were yeah. on rhythm guitar, correct? You were the guitarist? Oh, in the 12 Traps? Yeah, yeah. What were you in the 12 Oh, no, no. I was way uh -huh. too young for that. No, oh. I was way too young for that. No, okay. no, no. I played rhythm guitar in, in uh, a blues band called oh, the Low Down Dirty Blues Band. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, Don't yeah. Worry, uh, but, but, in the, but in the 12 Tribes... Yeah, what were you doing in the 12 uh, Tribes? Uh, uh, so, like, like you mentioned before, there were different, what we would call bodies, what? meaning there would be a cooking body, uh, an artwork body. Uh, there was a work body. They would go out and, like, uh, they were like a co-op a commercial co-op that would go out and uh, work on the roads doing uh, different contracts and that. And so it was kind of like, I think there's plenty of churches out, th out there that do that sort of same sort of thing was similar to that, but with a, with heavy lashings of, of Jamaican culture. Mm -hmm. And so the cooking body would like cook like predominantly Car Caribbean foods, like curry goat, uh, jerk chicken, uh, rice, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. Uh, and the music that we would practice and play, the, the, the band would practice and play was predominantly reggae. Uh, the, the style that the DJs would, would say and speak like would be like Jamaican style, Patwa. And so this was heavy with it. And like I say, it was like out of it because I knew that a lot of these people had just arrived from, you know, Danny Verk, Wellington, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like <laughs> straight with the dreadlocks and the, 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 the red, gold and green banners and, and, and whatnot. And it was, it was, it was beautiful, man. It was, it was really, really cool uh, to grow up in that sort of environment. And definitely, um, as, as in context of what we're saying, it definitely shaped me in terms of the music. Yeah. So, like, in terms of, um, so let's, because I know you're a big Star Wars dude, and, and I get that. Uh, do, do you say, and, and so am I, to a certain degree, I don't think I'm on your level, but I, I think I'm <laughs> around that level. Uh, Would you say that, uh, like, you know, like, your OB1 in terms of, like, understanding... Ooh. Just, uh, I don't know, like your voice mm -hmm. and everything else. Do you think it would be Stevie Wonder, my bro? Oh, sorry, bro. I'm missing the question. Like, do I did think you, I'm like... No, no, no. Do you think, like, did you learn a lot from just listening to Stevie Wonder and, and, and that kind of... Was Stevie Wonder oh, I, the guy? Got you. Uh, he was definitely the main guy, no doubt. He was definitely... In terms of how to, how to sing? Yeah. Yeah, word. He was definitely the main guy. I, uh, yo, yeah, used to copy his, his songs all the time. That's how I learned to sing, by copying him to sing. Uh, by copying his songs and how he uh, would sing, I would basically uh, say like, I'd play Superstition, but just like the first uh, 10 seconds or whatever, and I'd try and emulate that 10 seconds. And after I could do that, I'd, I'd move on. And so it was just like as simple as that. And after a year of doing that, uh, I sort of got really uh, a, a lot more, I got a hold of my instrument, you know what I'm saying? I could, I could yes. sing how I wanted to sing. And so he was one. Uh, Aaron Hall was another. Aaron Hall is a was a singer in a, a group called Guy, along with uh, Teddy Riley and Damien Hall. Yeah. Uh, wow. A uh, guy called Donny Hathaway, who was uh, you know a uh, cat from the you know, the soul era, sixties and seventies. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I think those three, bro. Okay. Yeah. What What is the song um, <clears throat> "Lover Man" from Otis Redding mean to you, bro? Oh. Uh, that was one of the first songs I ever sang for uh, the Low Down Dirty Blues Band, which was what we were called before we changed our name to Supergroove. Was so that the first always... time you had to sing something? Ah, uh, yes, yes, I think it was. It was, it was that, and maybe a Blues Brothers song, but I'm pretty sure it was was a uh, uh, I'm a Love Man. Yeah. Oh, look at T. I'm telling you, brother, I'm, I'm a professional. I'm the you are. You I'm, are, my I'm, G. I'm, yep. the, I'm yep. the hood professional. You bro. got me. You got me. But that's Word. all I got, G, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> the other, hey, all, look, other rest look. is just rubbish Star Wars references. <laughs> right. Would you think, like, who would be who would be someone? That, uh, let's say, like, uh, Anakin Skywalker. You know, he and he, he got, he got you know, fucked up in the other ones, and he came back. Do you reckon that's uh, Mighty Asterix, bro? When he got kicked out of the band, <laughs> you reckon Yo, that was yeah, yeah, I like, see Yo. where you're going with it. And yeah, that's a good parallel. Uh, maybe, bro, but the Mighty Asterix, he was more like a, he, he's more like a sensei to me. And so he'd be like Yoda to me. He he'd be like Yoda? my Yoda, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like his Padawan, so big ups to the Mighty Asterix. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because, um, because like he kind of went away, right? He was, you know, when you think about it, he kind of was like Yoda. Because then, you know, you catch up with Luke. Luke catches him on uh, what, what was the bloody, what was the uh, 
the the island that the, the, the oh, man you're gonna get me on this one i know uh um, no, not even bro no 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 you know the planet bro that he went to and it's like a jungle you know and then old yoda comes down that uh they da, 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 dagobah that's the dagobah system yeah yeah so he goes into dagobah right. luke goes into dagobah and then there's old asterisk right there old 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 shay's, <laughs> shay's little luke and old he's like hey bro I yeah found yeah this way mind you i hated luke though my g i hated luke like straight up i'll be 100 i hated luke oh who was yeah. it bro you you seem to me like a like a boba <laughs> fit jenga fit kind of a dude oh heavy Bob Fett all the way, straight up. I'm an Empire Strikes Back guy. Like, you know, that's my favorite of the series. Uh, the dude, the uh, Irvin Kushner, the director was the man. Like, yo, he made that stuff believable for me. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, right, because he got kicked off, right? Oh, did, did the Asterix get kicked out? Asterix? The young, the mighty Asterix from, of the from, 12, the 12 not trucks? That I, not no? that I know, brother. Okay. Nah. nah. Was he, he was know. in there though, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yep. And he went yeah, away yeah. and came back, and he was like, "One love, one that guy." And then all of a sudden, it was like, "Whoa!" Oh, I, I'm not. I'm yeah. I, I'm not sure what you what you're meaning. Uh, but he did. Uh, he just he. I, I guess he he eventually left. He must have. I've never really spoken to him about okay. that, uh, to be honest. But I think things genuinely, generally, uh, slow down for the, for the TTI during during the period of time. But it's still going on with a few members. But uh, yeah, he's now living in Australia. Oh. I get to catch up with him. Well, I did catch up with him a couple of times. I actually went over there with his son, Israel Starr. You know, shout outs to you, Israel. Uh, and so that was a hell of a time having being there with the, like the, I guess the Trinity of, of the Asterix. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> uh, and so he, he did some stuff for uh, DLT, right? That was when, yeah, yeah, most deaf. most deaf. Yeah. Yeah. Quite, quite, quite early after he also did uh, his own stuff through deep grooves. I remember he did a couple of projects with them. And uh, yeah, bro. I mean, that guy. You know, like like I said, hands down, he he helped put me on. You know, what I'm saying in terms of uh, how, how to sing and stuff. Basically, that style of of copying Stevie Wonder, I, I copied off him. You know, what I mean, because uh, at one stage he wasn't. You know, I I don't want to sound bad, but there was a definitely a period of time where his skills just went boom. Yeah, that's what I and mean. I, that's and what I'm and trying I asked, to get it. And I asked him like, "Yo, how, how'd you do that?" And he basically said to me. That uh, you know, he he actually was carrying the records with him. Pulled out his bag and had these like eight or six records, and it was like Earth, Wind, and Fire, Stevie Wonder, wow. and guys that he liked. And he basically said, you know, these are the guys I like. You know what I mean? So I thought, well, you know, I'll do the same sort of thing with the guys I like, and that's how it, that's sort of how cool. it came about. Damn. Yeah. All right, let's get into the super groove, bro. Like, how uh, did it, so it was uh, low down duty in uh, in high school, correct? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then all of a sudden, uh, it changed from like a blues band to like a James Brown type of feel, like a yeah. like a groovy type buzz. Like, what was? I mean, for you, because I mean, you know, like you were, you were just playing guitar, and then all yeah. of a sudden, you know, the the, the 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 one brown face in that, you know, it was like, oh shit, like uh, this dude can actually sing. Like, what was the uh, early, what was yeah. the early days like? Like, because there was no social media, so nobody knew anything. Yeah. How did you guys get around from place to place without using any type of marketing or anything? Oh, yeah. So, bro, uh, truth be told, there was a period of time before social networking. <laughs> and, yo, and, like, back in the day, people would, like, do gigs and tour. <laughs> and that's how you would basically get discovered for doing shows. And we, would, we, we did that. That's the traditional route. Uh, it's still pretty much the backbone of getting uh, getting out there. Obviously, since the advent of social networking, there's a lot of other things to the game now. But still, it, it does pay to be prepared to do gigs and tour. Uh, and so we did that back in the day. And uh, that's how we got out and about. So we, we gig and tour in, in Auckland. Uh, we got uh, approached by a guy who wanted to manage us. He, uh, he then, uh, this guy was Stuart Broughton. Shout out to Stuart. He uh, basically, Supergroove's uh, marketing was all down to that guy. He was really onto it. Uh, he had a great mind for putting on themed shows. And uh, we then eventually started touring New Zealand and we made a strong sort of, uh, uh, built a strong reputation on, on doing like crazy shows. You know what I mean? And uh, meaning like quite energetic shows. Uh, and that's how we sort of got discovered by record companies they started approaching us and so forth we got to radio and that that used to be the traditional route because uh i mean yeah when, what, what was that what was the day like when they figured out that you could sing how you i mean because it all kind of came together what was that like 
Uh, it, it was weird, bro. Yeah, it, was <laughs> it was weird for me. Me personally, it was weird because I never really want to be no front guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So what happened was like, uh, when I joined the band, I was the guitarist. I played guitar for the first four years. And then um, somehow uh, uh, one of the guys, I think it was Carl asked, or, what, or Joe, I can't remember. Someone asked if I could sing a particular song. I said, yep, I have a blast at it. We did the gig. I did the song. And a, a lot of the uh, supergroup parents were there. And they all were kind of like, yo, we think Shay should maybe sing a little bit more. That's the feeling I got, whether, that, whether, whether that's how it happened. But that's how it felt like to me. Like uh, everybody sort of thought, you know, maybe he, he should sing a little bit more. I was always like, thought I could sing well, but I wasn't terribly confident. You know what I'm saying? So that's when I started practicing. You know I mean? That's when I started like... Uh, really training hard. And, uh, and that's how that whole sort of uh, front guy, singing guy sort of kicked off. Cause you, did you have any like training, like as a singer? No, nah, not, not, not traditionally. Like I said, all I did was practice for a year yeah. doing that, doing that thing of copying other, uh, other R and B and soul singers. Cause yeah. when did, uh, cause when did your mom start like uh, working with Robin? <laughs> Damn G. Yo. So around about that period of time, she was working with Robin Hill, who was uh, a prominent, uh, uh, vocal coach and s singing teacher. And uh, yeah, she started working with her for a bit. Uh, that was a little bit before then. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, that would have been a trip, man. It would have been like, oh, yeah. okay, now I'm a singer now. Like all of a sudden, like, you know, yeah. holy shit. Like it would have been yeah. crazy. Yeah, actually it was like maybe a decade, decade after that, I, uh, I actually uh, got together with Robin to help me with some, I had, had a little trouble with my vocals at one point. I was a bit sick, and so she helped me out. So uh, she is a legend, no doubt. Yeah. Um, and then, like, because uh, I read about this promo tour that you took with Supergroove, and I was a bit like, whoa, that sounds like a bit of a trip, bro. You got, how old were you guys when you went on this, like, it was like India and all these other places? How old were you then? It would have been still in high school? Nah, I was 20. Oh, I was 20. Okay. Sweet. Yeah, just turned 20. Uh, Man, that would have been a trip, bro. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. It was crazy. I turned 21 on the road uh, oh, in, in Germany. That was crack up. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was missing home, right? And like uh, the only phone that I could get to was at the venue. So when I got to the venue, I'm like having a heart to heart with my family. <laughs> hey, my mom, my dad, I miss you, you know, because I really wanted to, obviously, you know, being a kid from New Zealand, the 21st is like a big thing, you know what I mean? But uh, so anyway, I'm on the phone crying, but the phone was at the front of the venue. And at the venue, there was like 500 people lining up. <laughs> so they're watching this funny island boy crying on the phone. <laughs> but yo, uh, so yeah, I was about 20 when we uh, did that, that trip to uh, India and uh, everywhere else. So like, I mean, I'm only coming for an, uh, an assumption type thing. And I, listen, I, I've been, I've been the, the, the one um, Maori fella, like, you know, half cast Maori fella in like a, a gang of uh, Pākehā. And then, uh, bro, I gotta be honest, I felt, I felt like a, I felt like a outcast. And I would, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just assuming, bro. I don't know. But did you yeah, ever yeah. feel like that, bro? Oh, heavy, bro. Not so much in the band, like in that world, though. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta understand that. The music industry at that time was predominantly uh, European, you know what I'm saying? And so what, what I mean that the industry was when I would go to the music awards or when I go to the radio station, like this was like, like a decade before my, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This was like a different uh, period of time. Uh, rock still ran things, you know what I'm saying? Rock music, you know what I mean? So there weren't that many uh, uh, Maori or... Pacific Island people that I would see, you know, out and about in that industry. So in that way, yeah, it felt like a little, you know what I mean? It felt a little lonely out there. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but I did feel like I represented us when I was out there. So I didn't want to mess that up. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I, I crack up. I like, cause I, I was thinking about a couple of weeks ago. Uh, some of the people that I would see would be like cats like Oscar, Oscar yeah. Kitely. Yo, oh, he yo. was out. Yo, he was out in the bout, bro. That 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 bro was killing it back then. You know what I mean? Because during that period of time, he was writing for the New Zealand Herald. He had a little uh, had a little column there, and so we would go to these like industry soirees or parties, and like I see him DJing, yo, and I'd be like, yo, what's up, bro? And uh, so you're right. It was a different world out there at that time. It's a little different now, but yeah, yeah. I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, like, and uh, like that's what I was trying to. Th- also, my segue into was like the the and I, I hey listen I know that you can't go too hard in it and, and I don't want to force your hand at all. <laughs> my man, my man, let's go. But that decision, yo, and I know and I know that and I, I can sense that in your heart of hearts. You're, you're I mean it's finished and over. But that decision that they made to get rid of you, bro, that was the yo. dumbest shit I ever fucking heard in my life. Right now, I'm like, I, I, as I was as I went through some of your footage and I could feel like I could feel that you know like. You just accepted it at the time, obviously. But right now you're yeah. like, hey, listen, this is just the the landscape that I was in. But was it yeah. like a band decision or was it more of a label decision? As far as I know, bro, it was a label decision. But ultimately, it is a band decision. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah. And kind of I do, up. I feel for my mans, like, you know what I mean? Like, because you got to understand we were just young, bro. Mm. And you got the potential of taking over the world in your mind in terms of releasing an album. Because you got to understand, like, what people don't remember is that we just done this big tour. The one that you spoke about, their promo tour. Yeah. So their promo tour did was, was good, bro. We caned it. So there was all these territories ready to pick us up, right? Because the tour did amazing. From, like, you know, Singapore to... You know what I mean? To Africa, to, you know what I mean? All over the place, bro. To Helsinki, to Norway, you know what I mean? They all loved the, the, the band and they, they wanted to drop the album. So we, we felt like we were on the precipice of something huge, like huge. And so uh, to have that taken away, that was, that was cold because we'd like worked quite a lot to, to get to that point. And so for the boys to make that decision, I could understand how uh, the seriousness of it, you know what I mean? And, uh, and for me, yeah, they made the wrong decision. And for Tim, Tim was the other guy that was also asked to, to sign a res- resignation. Tim was the trumpet player. So we were two, us two were, were asked to leave. Man, that's and so, uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty sore. That part. I mean, yeah. we've done a lot of work. The world tour was dope. We were about to be the biggest new thing since, you know, Topsies, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, oh, Yo. man, like, I just kind of, like, yeah, I just, you wonder who, and I mean, like I said, whether it was a, oh, shit, like, because, all, and I'm going to say, this is my opinion, all of the good songs right. were the ones that you were on. Like, I was like, I'll, I'll listen to the ones that the bro is on, but the rest of them, yeah, I'm a bit like, yeah, I don't know. And they were good songs, don't get me wrong. But like, I just vibed with your songs and I was like, yo, okay, let's go. But then when that happened, I was like, oh, okay. Were you, were you, were you fucking with DLT before like that, that shit happened or? Just before that tour. So just before that tour is when we recorded Chains. So I went on the tour came back and he dropped it and then I got asked to leave. And then that week was, uh, was when chains went gold. So it all sort of like, that you know what I mean? That would have been a blur, man. I was crazy for a young man. Like I tell you, the, the head trip was just nuts. You know what I mean? Like I just, you know, got kicked out of one band and then just gone gold with this other cat. So it was a crazy time. Yeah. But, uh, like I say, uh, uh, so yeah, I hooked up with Daryl DLT, uh, while I was with Supergroup, uh, because prior to that, uh, during a couple of the tours, we brought on Daryl to to come on the road with Supergroup, and so him, uh, Rhythm Slave, and Otis, uh, Manuel Bundy, uh, 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 Urban Disturbance, they were known as uh, Leaders of Style, which was uh, Zane Lowe's crew. Oh, yep, that's right, rap crew. And so, yeah, during that period of time, that's how we met those guys, and that's how I made the link with Daryl. Man, because, yeah. bro, like, what a what a serendipitous thing to happen, you know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, it's like, boom, and then, hey, hell, this is what happened. Yeah. That would have been so, like, when you think about it, if Supergroup would have just, you know, just stayed in their label, oh, not Supergroup, but the, the, the label would have just been like, hey, let's just see what happens. Right, yeah. and, and literally, like, if they would have just shut their mouth in, like, three weeks and made a decision three weeks later... Yo, Supergroup would have been humongous. Like, because they've got Yo. this guy that's amazingly talented and done chains. That would and and it wasn't. It was DLT featuring Shea Food Chains. It wasn't Shea Food, and that would have you know that would have hyped them up even more. Yeah, yeah. 
the what ifs. Uh, uh, there, there's many of those, eh, but uh, most definitely, like uh, yeah, for me, I would have thought that yeah, Supergroup would have been uh, a, a good look if yeah. we had to stay together on that buzz. Hard out. Yeah. Do you yeah. think that? Do you think that doing chains with um with uh, DLT had any was any catalyst to them kind of going? Actually, nah, bro. Because you seem like, bro, and, and I, I mean, I don't really, you know, I'm just, yeah. you seem like from everything else, like a loyal dude. Like, you know, you ain't out there, you just wanted to make some fucking dope music and you did. And then all of a sudden, do you, do you reckon that there was some type of catalyst from that or not? Nah? They wouldn't have known. Uh, the, the catalyst? Uh, sorry, 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 I, so, I'm trying to understand. Sorry, bro. Uh, yeah. for, so DLT, like when you went off and did some work with DLT, did you think that what might have st- like sparked, you know, and the super groove were like actually, bro? I don't know. Do you think it was some kind of sure? Thing? Um, I'm not too sure, bro. Maybe mm-hmm. like maybe they would have thought, oh, he'll be all right. You know, he's all good. Yeah. But the thing is, it's like I'm my own man, bro. I make my own decisions. Don't manipulate me. Uh, that was one. The other thing was we just worked. I, I put eight years of my life into this, yeah. and we just finished this world tour which is about to, like, it was going to go crazy, bro. Like, you know what I mean? Like, New York uh, playing at CBGB's, which which is, like, one of the most legend places in the world of rock. You know what I'm saying? Yo. To be able to play their place and get a mean crowd and, like, people is, like, vibing. Yo, who are these Kiwi cats from la di da da Yo, uh, I felt like we were about to go do something large, you know? Uh, but so it was more so that, yeah. that, that sort of compounded it for me, like, ah, rats, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, it was stressful, bro, hella stressful. And so it was a, tur- uh, a turbulent time. I went on the road with Daryl. I was still pretty much up in the air with whether I was going to continue on doing music or whether I was just going to go uh, to university and make video games. <laughs> no. yeah, that was the plan. That was the plan. No. Hey, uh, like, um, this is a story that I read too. It took you 30 seconds to uh, come up with the chorus for Chains in the Bathroom. Is this true? Thanks, bro. Thanks for that. <laughs> Cheers for that. Stroll down memory lane, my G. Yo. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's all true, bro. Oh, that's crazy, bro. Uh, that's such a good It's look, not bro. really, I don't really recommend that, my G. <laughs> uh, yeah, be prepared before you go into the studio. But let me just put the disclaimer in. Like, as far as I knew, I was only, like, asked to do a verse. Write my, write my two verses. That was it. So when I walked in there and the bro was like, yo, got your chorus ready, my G. I was like, uh, what? Uh, so, yeah, that was a funny time, bro. Yeah. That would have been trippy, bro. Like, um, you know, just, yeah. And, and being so young and just, but I suppose you had all these melodies and you kind of were just like, okay, f- from your years of just being musically you, and uh, yeah. it would have just kind of been like, okay, cool. Was it just I something that struck you? Like, boom. A, a little bit like you gotta understand at that time i was doing a thing called the realness which the realness was like a was like a, a dj night that we would put on at this place called the box in high street and so what this night would consist of would be like us djing me uh would be a manual bundy uh kinko pc uh dj sub-zero fatmospheric and myself and we would dj in these three rooms and we would rap and freestyle we did this for like three years you know what I mean? So on that buzz, in terms of being, being able to come up off the top, yeah, yeah, that wasn't too bad. But still, that's not my most ideal situation <laughs> for when I'm putting out my first song and for when I'm doing a track for someone that I really like hold in high regard like DLT. And so it wasn't really, <laughs> nah, it wasn't really cool, Maji. But uh, yeah, that taught me a lesson. Always, always be prepared. You know what I mean? That song has got so much like... Uh depth to it i suppose and there's so like just in the lyrics and uh, i mean the whole the whole thing but like was there was there a lot of kind of like political kind of ramifications that you came uh, like after you put that song out where people like yo why why are you talking about this for like was there anything like that a little bit more so like people were like yeah bro we feel that, you know what I mean? I think I, basically what I was talking about and what I was saying was stuff that's been on our people's minds anyway, mm. you know what I mean? And I think it was just refreshing for them to hear it in the style of music because you got to understand that this was before my fame, this was before that, before R&B, hip-hop was, was mainstream like now. Yeah. So back then, we were trying to uh, get on, you know what I mean? And at that point, it was pretty much M.O.R., Middle of the Road Rock, stations that were running things here in australia and so uh not only was it 
it felt not only did it feel good to be writing about those themes, but also it was good to be able to do a rap song, bro, that was from here and we were talking about here, you know. Was it the first time, like, uh, I mean, because Super Groove, you kind of had little bars here and there, but yeah. we just had the box just spitting mad, mad freeze. And then yes, just, yes, know, yes, and then yes. Plus, sudden, you got to understand, during Super Groove, I was in a crew called Token Village, which was MCs, DJs, and uh, instrument players. You know, oh. we had we had a full band. And so that was also a catalyst for a lot of that sort of training. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Bro, that's, that's, that's buzzy, eh? And then, like, um, because that kind of sparked off, right? Because I mean, Kirk was kind of like, "Hey, like this guy's a free agent. Let's let's pick him up." And and that's what happened, pretty much. Is that correct? And then they picked you straight up. You mean Kirk Harding? Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. So, Kirk Harding was actually the A and R for Supergroove. Oh for wow! Supergroove. Yeah, so he was our man for Supergroove. So our careers both basically paralleled. He he went up and we went up with him. So he was the guy that discovered us in terms of a record label. So we got Stuart Broughton, who was an amazing manager, and then we and then uh, we were approached by many other record companies. as crack up. I, I wish I could tell you some of the stories that that that, that went down. Like you know, what I mean, in terms mm -hmm. of uh, some of the crazy. Like they would try and poach you. You know what I'm saying? Like oh. uh, I tell you this one, man. Like one time we were at this record. Uh, company do and it was down Rotorua and like you know they were, they were basically schmoozing us I won't tell you which record company it was but we go and after the little gig that we did I'm out in the car park having a relax <laughs> and uh, these two cats these two uh, two uh, European guys come over and they were like oh man we love the gig we love the gig and I'm like we're thanks appreciate that and they were like we're actually from a rival record company here's our card like you know get at us if you don't like these guys and I was like oh shucks is that how you guys do it out here I was like yo like they drove to Rotorua you know what I mean wow. <laughs> like yo and so those crazy things was kind of going on during that period of time and so but we eventually uh, ended up uh, going with BMG and that was with uh, Kirk Harding and so after us, he, uh, he he'd always had strong ties with uh, DJ Severe for the bell. What up, what up, my G? Uh, and so that's how Phil sort of got involved with uh, me and uh, the Shafu project. Uh, obviously, uh, also with the UPR project. Yeah, because he was was Phil. Um, he was an A and R at the time. Was he? Uh, he was like a yeah, like yeah, yeah. He was A and Ring UPR for a bit because that was his. That was his, Yo. you know what I mean? That was his idea. That was his thing. Yeah, man. And then uh, Kirk, uh, you know, overs over oversaw that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that was, that was, so Kirk didn't pick me up. I was already with BMG at the time and we already signed individual deals. So we didn't sign together as a band. We all signed individually. So when I got uh, asked to resign from the band, I was still legally had a, had a contract with uh, BMG at the time. Oh, wow. All right, bro. Let's get into to, um, to be specific, bro. Because this is my this is my <clears throat> yo I'm telling you, bro. I had to be specific in my CD player, bro, for a whole year. Never took it out. Never took it out. Like I had one of them spinners. You know, you can put like five different. Sure. Yo, man. I had yo. I <laughs> never took that out. That and Mace Harlem World. Those are my two. Okay. Oh, and it was all that. But um, because you you spent some time in New York before you actually like went in on like the production side of things. Is that correct? Yeah. What did, bro, what did you pick up over there? Oh, how do you mean? Like, uh, like, like uh, skill wise. Oh, okay. So, uh, at that time, I, what was I doing? What level was I at? I just to before to be specific. Oh, okay. So during that period of time, I'd been going to, uh, a guy called, uh, Submariner, Andy Morton. Uh, he had a studio out in Shortland Street in Auckland there. And so we would go to his house, uh, sorry, his studio, sorry. And he'd have all the, all the gear. And so that was the first time we all sort of really sort of got close to the gear. Uh, also, just prior to that, or a few years before that, uh, I was in a crew called Wicked Youth, which was a rap crew. And my DJ at that time, uh, my homie uh, DJ Juice, who later on uh, formed uh, Woodcut, you know, Woodcut? Woodcut Productions? Yeah. And so, which was obviously uh, uh, MC, uh, M MTC, you know what I mean? That whole Young Sid, Tyree, that whole yeah. 
They had a ilk. Uh, so he was my DJ at that time. And uh, he had a sampler and he had like a, a programming. Uh, he had a program that ran on this crazy old uh, Atari. It was the, it was called the Atari Notator. And that's what I wrote Waka on. Yeah. You know, uh, and so that's the sort of stuff I was working with at that time. So I go over to New York and uh, part of the, the mission was to, to link up with a producer, help me produce this album. So the producers that I saw and met, it was all good, but me personally, I mean, music is subjective, right? I got my own tastes. I got my own feels. I wasn't feeling it. And so um, I basically came back. And the thing that I learned was to stick to my guns. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? To, the thing that I learned was that to be myself and to be original. Because when I went over to the States, the thing that I noticed was that everybody was coming up with angles. You know what I mean? So right at that time, Wu Tang Forever had just come out, so they were they were still doing their their second and third album type thing. Biggie Ready to Die had just dropped because because when I left New Zealand, I had the vinyl with me. Do you know what I mean? I had the yeah. vinyl with me. Wow. Went over there, the vinyl wasn't even in New York, wasn't even there. Whoa. Do you know what I'm saying? Shit. So New Zealand at that time was quite quite you know on the pulse. You know what I mean? That's crazy. You wouldn't think. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I know, I know. Because when we went over there, well, this is what happened when we went over there. I left the records in Grey Lynn, but what happened was that the record company had mistimed the flights, so they had to fly us back after one week to go to the music awards. You know what I mean? Oh. And during that first week when I was in New York, I, I noticed that no one had the vinyl, and people were lining up at Loud Records for posters. You know what I mean? People were mad lines just for the posters. Fuck. So when I came back home, I grabbed the vinyl, I brought it back, and I was like, yo, you know what I mean? And so... Uh, Basically, uh, Tim, what I learned was that just to stick to my guns, because like I mentioned, people were trying to come up with angles over there. So they were trying to make crew, like horrorcore was buzzing at that time. Wow. You know what I mean? Everybody trying to, you know what I mean? Come up with a theme, like an angle. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. You know, like cowboy rap or, you know what I'm saying? And so what that meant for me was that I just had to be uh, myself because, you know, we're from the Pacific and we got enough, you know, enough stories to tell. Oh, was that around so, the time that like... Uh... Like Digital Underground was doing like the Humpty shit. Was that nah, around? No, 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 no. Nah, that was way before that. Oh, okay. That was way before. So I'm talking like 96, okay. 97. So 97, I went out there. Yo. Yo. Man, that's and, uh, crazy. And so basically, I was paid to go out there, soak up the atmosphere, go to shows, go to gigs, uh, see what's what. I went to the DMCs out there. I saw Craze when he was like 17. Oh. Yo. Uh, and so we spent like a couple of months out there. I came back just full, fully confident and, uh, and started the record out at uh, Shortland Street there. Because it was you and, and Daryl, right, that went over? No. Nah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah me and Daryl went over. And yeah. then like, because the day kind of, with, 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 uh, um, was the label kind of like, yo, Daryl's going to produce m most of your stuff? And then you were like, is it, was that how it worked? And then you were like, no, 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 no. Because you went away and you came back and you're like, yo, this is my vibe. Yo, if you're fucking with yeah. you, you're fucking with it. Either roll yeah. with me or roll against me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then, and they were kind of like, okay, you could do what you want. Or was it, because I know that Daryl was a good dude and, you know. Yeah, so when we went over there, he was doing his own deals. He was doing his separate deals for his record. Because at, at that time, he was working on uh, Altruism, which was his uh, uh, yep. a second, yeah, his second record. Uh, and so, and I was doing my own deals as well. And then when we came back, uh, the uh, the A and R at that time, Kirk wanted me to work with Daryl on the album. We tried that; that didn't work out, and so uh, I ended up moving so, left. Yeah, yep, yeah. and I ended up going out with going to make it with my crew. And like I said, at that time, I was uh, sort of in Token Village, and Andy Morton was a part of that crew. Yeah, and so basically, all those guys: Ned Star, aka Killerman Raro, King Capici. All, the, all my boys basically all mucked in as we would for each other and uh, help put my record together to be specific. And because yeah. Phil was part of that, right? Like Phil was helpful in terms of like he, he brought his knowledge to, to the thing as well. So after uh, I basically sort of didn't do it with Daryl, uh, Kirk went with uh, DLT to do his project as well as UPR. And then Phil got put on me. Yo. So that's how I got Phil. He was my a &R. And then just before my album dropped, Phil left and went on to uh, do another business 
out at uh real group uh sorry uh at a uh, beat merchants oh well that's right yeah, yeah yeah man i used to man beat merchants was the jam yo 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 straight up yeah that, that used to be my that used to be my circle i used to come out from out south i'd go to the loft to look for looking for some sneakers then i would go to loaded and then i'd go across the road to beat merchants give me a mixtape give me something crazy and then i'd go home and that was uh, yeah i could because you know you don't want to park too long in that victoria street yep. park and you're just like nah. yeah Where? brother okay bro so like um bro like uh that walker beat my g who Yo. who was in charge of that, bro? Because whoever was that Chong Ni or was that somebody else? No, I made that, bro. You made that shit. Yeah. Fuck. Like I said, I made it on the note setter. Yeah, I yeah, mentioned yeah. it before. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I made that, bro. Fuck, yeah, bro. Yeah. That, that yo, if that uh, and bro, uh, no matter what order that whole, because it's like a story. Like I, when I listen to uh, to be specific, it's a story for me. Like it starts off and then you go straight like from, from your intro and then see Fu. Round one or whatever it says, and then straight into that, bro. And yeah. like, was it like, like, were you just like that beat has to be the first thing that comes in as soon as we play? As soon as we uh, play. When it comes to the album, I definitely was. I came from that uh, record making style of doing concept records, like yeah. so, as opposed to like just putting a whole bunch of songs together. And you know what I mean? For uh, I try to make records that had a, you know what I mean, so that you could listen to it in one listening. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, and so in that way, yeah, that's how the, the, you know, the intro, the theatrical sort of side of things and the general flow of it was sort of planned. Yeah. yeah. Cause you already had chains out with, with, uh, with the album and that was like a single in itself before the album, even uh, after the, before the album came out, but did you know which one was going to be your first single after you finished the album? It's a good question. Uh, shucks. Not really, not really. Like, uh, I was still sort of learning the game at that time. And so I just wanted to make a, a cohesive album first and then extrapolate whatever single might work commercially after that. But I ended up being too clever for my own boots and I got caught out a couple of times. So I learned a lot of lessons on that record. Basically, I made a mistake and I wrote a song that I thought was the one and I put it and I, I submitted it to be the single and uh, the record company didn't agree with me. So they asked for, for an option for a second option for me. So me trying to be a clever guy, I, I wrote a, what I thought was a pretty naff shitty song and, <laughs> and then they went for it, <laughs> you know? And I was like, Oh, and I, I got myself into, into a position where I, uh, yeah, yeah. I didn't want to do that again. What was that so, song? Ah oh, shit. <laughs> it was without a doubt, bro. It wow. was without a doubt. And so I'd written Machine Talk to be the one. So if you know the video, at the end of that, there's a little snippet of Machine Talk. Yep. So I, I actually put a lot of effort into Machine Talk as being the, the first single and the being the main sort of thing. What's yeah. Machine Talk, bro? And this is this is the analogy that I came up with. Is it about the rat race, bro? Absolutely. Oh, there. Boom, I got it. I was telling my mate that. He's like, no, no, no. I was like, fucking A. It's about the rat race and everything like that. Yeah. And so the incident was just happening, bro. Just back then. The incident was just happening. Like, you know what I'm saying? That period of time. I wasn't even on that shit. Yeah. I guess I was one of them late adopters. Like, no, that's the devil, bro. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? And uh, obviously, that's a moot point now. But uh, that's what that song was sort of written for. Yeah, definitely the, that whole sort of rat race. I wouldn't have thought that, bro. Cause like you use the word online, and I know that when that song came out, the word online wasn't everywhere. It was just nah, like nah. You're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. But see here, but you wouldn't even think about it now. But back then, it was like a whole. So I was basically projecting, bro. I was thinking, man, this is what could happen. Do you Yo. know what I mean? If the internet goes crazy, this is what could happen, man. And so a lot of the songs were written like that. You know what I mean? Trying to, you know what I mean? Trying to guess. Guess what's gonna happen, man? Know? Without a doubt, it's one of my favorite tunes, brother. Oh, my bad, G. My bad, bro. <laughs> you that shit for my me, bad, Shane. my bad, my, yo, my bad, bro. My bad, bro. I'm gonna, yo, you watch after this podcast. I'm going back and I'm listening to it again, <laughs> and I'm like, actually, he's yo. got a good point. <laughs> <laughs> my bad, bro. Oh, bro. bro. And then scene three, bro. That's another one. I'm just like, yo, what? How? Did, what was the thought process behind scene three? Like in terms of writing it. Uh, scene three. Yeah. Uh, that was my attempt at trying to write a love song, bro. Yeah. I, I so I'm not really the man at that, like, you know what I mean? Never. It's, 
I don't know, man. I guess I've gotten older and things are a little bit more easier. But at that age, I wasn't, you know what I mean? I was kind of, because of the stuff that I was listening to at that time, you know what I mean? I was listening to J.Ru, The Damager, you know what I mean? Wu-Tang, Mob D, you know what I mean? They ain't much love song, uh, you know, inspirations. Like maybe, like, maybe you're all I need by Mythic Man, but you know what I'm saying? That's that's how heavy I could get, get with it in terms of love songs, so. Man, that was I, my. I gotta call you out on that shit, okay? Oh, because I know you're a D'Angelo fan, and I Hell, know yeah. D'Angelo was yo around that time. D'Angelo yeah. was banging, G. Yeah, yeah, bro. It was just D'Angelo. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. That was it. You're right. You're right. yeah, just just D'Angelo. You know what I'm saying, but you gotta understand, I was fully like, uh, you were in that. You were in the woo, bro. Well, I was like, pretty small minded when it came to that because at that time I wouldn't even mess with R and B. You yeah. know what I mean? I wouldn't even play that shit. Yeah. I was just like, at the realness, that thing I was telling you about, three years of boom bap, you know what I mean? No. Strictly. I wouldn't even mess with that stuff. I only started playing R&B uh, in the last decade or so. Ever since I uh, sort of did this show down in Wellington with my sensei, DJ Vro. Shouts to DJ Vro. And uh, yeah, man, I just thought, man, you know what? It's time to like try and make people happy. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Not just myself. So yeah, back to your question. Scene three was my first go at trying to uh, write a love song. And so I used the, uh, a Kung Fu scene out of a movie called uh, Iron Monkey uh, as, in, as in, it inspired me and moved me to, to, to write, try and write this uh, love song. Yeah. Because I mean, like, um, or like even just, I mean, the Kung Fu movies and, and Kung Fu movies in general, bro, was that like, was Wu-Tang like the amalgamation of everything you love, bro? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, bro. I, I was the same. <laughs> pretty much. Bro. Yeah, well, that spoke to my heart. Yo, yo yep. I yep, was the 100%. same. When, yep. when I first heard 36 Chambers, bro, and I was like, holy shit. I just yep. finished watching the whole, like, I was watching Bruce Lee on VHS, and then my my bro was like, yo, check this, and he had the vinyl for 36 Chambers, yep. and I was just like, wow, can you put that on the tape for me, my brother? And then I just listened right. to that regard, like, yeah. That was my yep. champ, bro. Yeah. And you work with them, right? You work with a couple... What you doing? I did work on one of the tracks that got re- released uh, as part of an international project. Yeah, called Click Click. Oh. Yeah. And uh, basically, they just sent out the instrumental and you can just record a verse on it, spit it back. So they didn't, we didn't, we didn't Actually, hit the studio together. Yeah. You know what I mean? But uh, still, it was, uh, it was hella uh, humbling. You know what I mean? Shout well, out to Kirk for that one. All right, Shay, I'm going to impress you with my segues right now, brother. Oh. Okay, here we go. Super Groove. And I know that you're a Jordan fan, brother. Super Groove, Super Groove, I believe, was your North Carolina, brother. I reckon, oh. yo. And then I reckon, I reckon, to be specific, was you, you could was the first three years of Jordan, right? You know, just learning the ropes. You know, going in, going in, and seeing the old, the old teammates fucking sniffing the lines and going, no, 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 I'm here to <laughs> fucking work. Oh, fuck, he's a, <laughs> yo, he's a mad snitch, eh? Let's be, <laughs> uh, when I watched it, I was like, damn, Mike, how are you going to snitch on your teammates like that? True, true, true. But true, I true, feel, true. in my heart of hearts, Navigator was your was your first three, Pete, my G. Like, I oh, honestly cool. think so. If I, I look at that at that track listing, and I even put it up on my um on stream right now, I honestly think you were just, you learned everything from, especially from Chains. Chains was like your, your draft night, I suppose. And then to be specific was like, okay, let's figure this shit out. Let's find out how to score. Let's find out how to make my teammates better. And then all of a sudden, bro, Navigator came along, and you were just like... Bro, it was like everything I knew you would, get, you know, like as a kid, I was like, bro, that's my G right there. And and like, bro, did you feel like the melodies, like, because I think like the melodies in terms of like to be specific, you probably had in your head for years and years and years and stuff like that. But how was a different kind of finding melodies for, for Navigator? I feel you, bro. So uh, that's a good question uh, for you songwriters out there. Here's a good one for you. So. When when I was with Supergroove, we'd, we'd, we'd talk about like releasing albums and, and, and we'd talk about other famous rock artists, famous international artists, uh, you know, like the, the kings of the, the, the game, like, you know, guys like uh, uh, David Bowie, uh, Bob Dylan, uh, Bob Marley, you know what I mean? Uh, and for us, we really wanted to concentrate on the second album because our, our our belief was the first album was always going to be your first album 
So it's poss- probably going to get the most uh, attention purely on that alone. The second album is the truly hard record because obviously, like you mentioned, the first album will have all your best ideas, everything that you know up until that point. And then after that, what do you have? And so I've always been into the long game. So I always sort of had that in my mind to not necessarily not put awesome songs on the first album, but to also have a mind on the second record. And so for you to say that, I appreciate that, bro, because yeah, by the time I did The Navigator, I was really comfortable with uh, being able to go to a studio, being able to run the room, being able to tell the engineer what I need and what I don't need. Because being, uh, I guess, like a lot of us brothers out there, I was a little intimidated when I was in that uh, position. Hey, okay. You know what I mean? When you're in a massive studio and there's all these guys, like, you know what I mean? They, if you let it go, they'll, they'll take control. You know what I mean? And that's how it's happened for me in the past. Yeah. And so I just needed to like... Uh, uh, just fucking grab my nuts and like just try and like run it, you know what I mean? And so the Navigator record was was definitely uh, like that for me. So I kind of knew what I was doing. I uh, everything was prepared. When we hit the studio, we smashed that. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, we were we were creating, we we're producing. Oh man, we were doing like stuff that I always wanted to try. Like you know what I mean? Tape compression was huge for me. You know what I'm saying? Uh, on the drums to make those drums sound like rap drums. That was life for me. Do you know what I mean? Meaning like, I really wanted to know how they did that, how they made, how, how, uh, you know, Clive Stubberfield made the funky drummer. I want to know how they did that. So did a lot of research. Uh, I was lucky enough that I had a budget that could allow me to go to the studio and really utilize the whole thing from, from where to go. And so, yeah, uh, the Navigator was was uh, an awesome time. Because even uh, even like commercially, like you know that you had a lot of success, and I suppose this was at a time when like Mai was getting you know its feet and and they started running and they started being able to to push out you know like um, um I mean your tunes and stuff like that. Um, bro, what's your favorite like uh, in terms of like single wise? What was the first single off um Navigator? Was it Misty Frequency? Oh, damn, you got me. Uh, or fade away. Oh, oh, I think it was fade away, bro. Okay, yeah, and which one? Sure. Which one would you? Uh, was that your choice? Yes. Yep. Yes, it was. Yep. Because that tune, even today, like I, I, yeah, even today, I still am just like all the time. Like uh, before we came on, I was like, "Yo, let's 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 give you a favorite." Um, you know Shay lyrics and stuff like that, and that was the first one that would pop up, man. Is that the is that the most kind of requested song that you reckon that you've uh, like fade away would be? Sure. Uh, actually, bro, for me, like of late, I don't know, just it's, it's, if it's just in the last couple of years, but for me, it's been Waka. I don't know, maybe because I get a lot of wedding, like like, yeah. like people like they they use it a lot of weddings. I don't know, but I seem to see that one of late. I don't know why, but yeah, it's cool, bro. Yeah, yeah. What I really, I mean, my favorite track on there, and this is me coming from, you know, my, my Māori heritage was uh, He, he, he Kotahi, and just to hear you bring the real to the masses, brother, was like, yep. oh, snap, like, this is amazing. And, um, you know, that's something that my nan can listen to, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And, and like, um, yeah, I was really like, yeah, I, I, I don't want to use the word proud because, you know, but I was, pr- oh, no, I will use it. I was proud <laughs> as my G. I was I like, you, fuck, bro. bro, that's my, like, because, you know, and it was like, bro, I came up in the era when LeBron was in high school, right? And like, you would watch LeBron and you'd be like, yo, fuck, that's LeBron in high school. And we had to download his games on fucking Napster, brother. Like, I was like getting that stuff and reading about him in Slam magazines and things like that. And then when he got to the league, you're like, oh, cool. And now you watch him and you're like, bro, I'm proud of that dude. That dude took all of that stuff. And it's very similar to like when I, when I, uh, you know, like in the last couple of weeks, I've just been going through the albums and just going, man, like, there's so many, so many just bangers bro and then i just yeah man i just gotta I, if there was a time that i could give you props bro and say thank you this is the time so thank you bro. oh my man oh i appreciate that my man yeah bro thank you top yeah. floor is another one bro i, I really appreciated you know and it, it was really like for me i was like fuck man like it's you know that's some real touchy like i felt that i felt the stuff in top floor and 
and yeah so i'm, I'm glad that um other people like you know for both for to be specific and for um navigator like i feel where like you know it, it, it was the soundtrack of me growing up and um yeah i just wanted to make sure that um you know and not just me there's a lot of people you know oh cool bro i appreciate that yeah, yeah i mean like it still uh you know makes you feel a kind of a way to hear such things now still <laughs> like, you know what i mean but i appreciate that bro uh as a songwriter to think that my words would go you know what i mean further than just my room is still a little bit of a buzz for That's me uh I mean, i'll tell you one bro like i remember one time i was out in australia a few years back a very long time ago in fact and like this dude just hit me up and he was like bro you know, i love your music it really saved me and it helped me and i was like you know i was like oh thanks man and he goes yeah i was in a sorry man i don't want to like you know buzz you out but i was in an asian prison for like <laughs> 10 years wow. bro and uh one one day your song came on man and it really lifted me up i appreciate that thank you and then he, and he just moved on and so you know i just that that sort of stuff and to hear you and and it still like you know makes me feel wow like you know what i mean like uh and so i appreciate it brother i sincerely do do you get a lot of people that uh like in new zealand come up and and, and say you know like give you that 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 props that uh kudos i suppose uh yes uh very blessed yeah bro oh, yeah bro. yeah still still yeah 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 appreciate it, and uh, bro don't get me wrong bro beneath the radar was the jam too like uh, <laughs> yeah thank you man uh, i mean light work in two you might have been the only guy that thinks that bro uh, <laughs> but you know what i liked about it because i was I, I like there was a lot of cuts and a lot of turntable stuff and I was keen for that. I was I was into that shit, you know? Well, I'll be honest with you, bro. That was my art record, bro. That was me being right. an artist. Like, you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, as, as much as it may seem like a commercial thing, I've always been a creator. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like even now, bro, like, you know, even now, like, I, like if I can show you my room, like, uh, I still love the process of writing songs and making beats, bro. Even yeah. if I don't release stuff, you know what I'm saying? It's just, I guess, a part of, you know who i am you know what i mean and so yeah. on that buzz yo okay since we got that out of the way but i reckon beneath the <laughs> beneath the radar was your washington wizards season my dude <laughs> word no, my no, man no, my no, man playing, hey playing, it is what it is <laughs> tell, tell, tell me bro tell me oh bro i just i got oh, bro i gotta get this off my chest no nah, no nah. no i i you know like hey bro mike is the man and like i honestly like when i look back at it you know mike did have that time where he was just learning and it was a good five six years and the pistons beat him down and you know like i, I yeah i was thinking about it on the drive from work i was like actually it's 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 very uh it's it, there's a lot of parallels there yeah. <laughs> my man, my man. yo beneath the red of the fucking wizards fucking oh my god <laughs> <laughs> my man, my man. I gotta keep it, we're keeping it real, you know. Hey, I feel you, I feel you. Hey, it wasn't hey. me. We, we, we there now. Okay, we there okay. now. We can keep it 100 now. <laughs> my G, my G. Bro, when's the first, what's your first gaming memory, bro? Because I know you're a big gamer. Yo. When's the first time you can remember a game? Oh, shucks. It had to be uh, Fun City, Queen Street. Uh, and they used to have, like, uh, the, the machine gun ones. But it was, like, you know pre uh vector graphics pre like anything any sort of computer graphics that we know i think they were just like lights you know what i mean yeah yeah they would uh, oh, for, going way back so uh yeah and then there was uh, space world and then wizards Yo. and i guess wizards had the first sit down games that that we ever saw yeah but uh i mean when it comes to gaming all time for me all time game is uh robotron 2084 so that that's me like yo i love that game Bro, you stumped me, G. I don't even oh, know. Oh, no? You don't know that game? No. Two handles. Bro. Two handles. Well, Google that shit, my G. Bro, uh, how old Robotron 2084. 2084. You, you get a heart attack. You play that game, my G. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Man. Robotron. God damn. Robotron 2084. 2084. 2084, yeah. even. Yeah, yeah, What about yeah. consoles, bro? Do you have consoles growing up? Yeah, console. Uh, consoles, yeah, man. Day one. Yeah, day one. Like, you, you got to remember, like, I was so signed to Sony for a little while there, B. Like, yo, they know me good up there. I know. I heard yeah. Donnie told yo. me that. <laughs> yo. Yeah. But I mean, like growing up, did you ever like a Seagull? Or, oh, know? that sort of stuff. So yeah. uh, my little brother had a, like a Nintendo. Uh, I like, hold up. Wait there. Okay. I'm waiting.
Yo, so I mean, we was rocking that, you know what I mean? Yo. Yo. So yeah. during that period of time when uh, it was consoles, and that's what I'm saying, I guess this would be the earliest. You know, the Astro Wars. Fuck. And then my parents got this from the States. And this was uh, early, uh, early Pac Man. It's all busted up now. But that's why we were rocking, I guess, wow. first in terms of the ho- home gaming stuff. Yo. But then my little brother had like a, he had a little Nintendo Duck Hunt and whatnot, Yo. Mario. That was the one, eh? Uh, and then I guess I have to say, like, for me anyway, as far as like dudes that I knew uh, out and about in our area, uh, my guys, our generation were the ones that would like, like grown men that would go to the video store and hire yep. the Sega Master System 1, 2 and whatnot. And like the Battle Station 2, you remember that? Yeah, bro. Yeah. Well, the, well, the, you know, the, I guess how we know like the Pandora's box now, yep. like. Originally, it was the yeah. system called the Battle Station. So we were the guys, the adults that would push the little kids out of the way. Excuse me, excuse me. We're hiring that for two nights. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and Man. so when it comes to the consoles, I guess we were, we were you know, almost adults by that point. Because they Still always like, used to, when you get them from the video shop, they used to come in those uh, those uh, briefcases with the foam on the inside, right? <laughs> yep. You know, and they were yep. like, hey, like, bring it back. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, and you could, I, I, and the other thing too is like, you had to be a member there for a certain amount of time before you can hire them because people would just make a, make a copy and they just bounce t- out of town. And then it's like, yeah. oh, there goes our mega drive. Yeah, yeah, bro. bro. Um, so, so Nintendo was the one at, at home. Yeah, the oh, Mario. Oh, for my little brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, for me, I guess really the console sort of life sort of really happened when the PS One dropped, and so that was kind of like the big one for me. What was the PS One game, bro? That you like when you say PS One? What's the game you? Rem- what's some games that are straight to your mind? Oh, without a doubt, Journey Lomu was uh, our number a. one game. Yeah, yeah, and so. Uh, I think the first bunch that came out with the the PS One drop was Cool Borders and uh, Pandemonium. I think yep. they were the first. Yep. They came out with the first bunch, maybe Crash as well. But uh, yeah, love the PS PS One. Love love the whole gaming like heavy. So we we joined it like uh, big time. Uh, Final Fantasy Final Fantasy Seven. Yeah, love that game. That was like killer for me. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, and the the normal sort of you know NBA stuff. I was heavy into uh, the Fight Night series, Knockout Kings, that whole thing. Man, uh, isn't it a crime, bro? That there's not another boxing game out. Yeah, yeah, but that's I guess that's just in in lieu of the UFC. You know what I mean? That's yeah. basically killed boxing. You know, in terms of uh, popularity. Yeah. So I think well, that's just the the spin off. I hope I hope they that. bring it back. You know, with with um with uh, Wilder and uh, you know like uh, Joseph Parker, who else? Uh, uh, Anthony Joshua, all those dudes. You know, hey, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. why not? Sheesh. Yeah, Fight Night was the jam, eh? I loved it, mate. Yeah, uh, I got challenged by uh, the EA Sports champion one year to uh, a couple of games. Ticking, uh, they actually ambushed me at a gig in Hamilton one time. Uh, I, I go backstage and they had like a, a monitor set up <laughs> and they were really like, you know, ambush me, man. I was yeah. like, all right. So uh, that was my first sort of go at it, going against a competitive gamer. Yeah. And that was all good. I took out the, the, the Lomu and the, and the boxing. He got me on the ticking. That's so, cool. Yeah, yeah. Bro, nothing beats Lomu, eh? Let's be honest. They <laughs> My man. I love that game, yo. Bro, you ever play it on the multi-tap, bro, when you had four players? Uh, that's that's the way we used to rock it. So right. I don't know if you have a listen to the first record, to be specific. There's a little bit of that in there, a little bit of Lomu. Uh... Yeah. Oh, you didn't know that? No. Oh, bro. Bro. Uh, Educated, yeah, it's, uh, brother. Let's go. Oh, it's, it's, it's in uh, one of the, uh, I guess, little excerpts there at the end of, uh, I think it might be at the beginning of Without a Doubt on the album. Okay. But it's, uh, yeah, basically, because that was our life, Joining Lomu, multi-tapping. Yeah. Join the Lomu was was what we did, <laughs> you know what I mean. And so, uh, yeah, even uh, even the the homie uh, Scribble, he we, I welcomed him to that one night. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, bro, yo. did you did you know that? Uh, did you ever use that glitch, bro? When you got tackled and you just shrug, stand back shrug? up? Yeah, brother. Shrug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was Put, a shrug. Yeah. Uh, you're running in the air. That shit. Too. You know what I mean? Uh, bro, but we played you... uh, what we would call gentleman rules. So no shrugging. Oh. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, no delay passes. We 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 would play like that. Oh, okay. You could, you could, yeah. you could if you wanted to, but we would play this other thing, and and then it would just be a just handoff. Passing. Yo, yeah. yeah. Um, bro, what what what's your like Street Fighter? Like everybody, I know that you're a Street Fighter dude. Yeah, yeah. What's uh, bro? Like, walk me through your 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 life with the with the with the greatest fighting game of all time, bro. Let's. I'm just gonna throw it out there. I oh, took World Warrior. Yeah, oh, bro, any Street Fighter, but World oh. Warrior was, I mean, you well, know. They, well, they kind of got, got their own nuances, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But, like, I mean, because, I mean, I don't know but, about you, but, I mean, a lot of people hold Hyper Fighter as being the, you know what I mean, the, the equalizer in terms of the most even, the most, you know, the, uh, where the, the fighters are, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, whereas World Warrior's got a special place for me because that was the one that, Turned us all on to it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, obviously, with the the old invisibles, oh, the freezing and whatnot. Freezes. You know what I mean? Uh, they they were they were first time I ever seen anything like that, like a, a proper hack or a glitch of of a, yeah. that that type. Uh, so that was dope. I love that. Uh, I was never a hyper fighter guy. That's only been of recent, you know, since I've been um, watching uh, guys like uh, DJ Reminis and his uh, hyper fighter crew. You know, I mean, I was like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. But I was like, nah, I never was a hyper fighter guy. And then I, I always wondered what was so cool about it. And then obviously I learned, ah, okay, they, they evened up all the fighters. Okay, I get it, I get it. Yeah. But during that period of time when it was out, nah, we never really knew about that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I only been uh, after the point. But uh, uh, what was that? Street Fighter Third Strike, uh, which is a whole different sort of ball game. Yeah. Uh, then you got the Super, you got the Turbo, which was, I guess, the introduction of the the gauge yeah which is kind of a little yeah. bit ah, i don't know man like i don't know i mean it allows you to like come back if you're shit <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm like ah but i guess i'm old like then uh but yeah 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 uh, nowadays yeah street fighter five my my kids rock it i mean uh we had a little stand up here i borrowed old kinker pieces one my bro caps because he's got crazy clicks and like that guy is insane when it comes to like star wars uh, toys and just toys in general, man. Him and his uh, lovely partner Tidamwana, they've combined their connections because the sister clicks heavy as well. Wow. So yo, yo, you better you gotta get uh, get into get them in here because like uh, he crazy with it. And so he's got like a couple of stand up cabinets. And so I borrowed his one time because I needed to train up for uh for some of my homies that are really good. <laughs> and I wasn't terribly good at hyper fighter. Like I say, I was a world warrior guy. But uh, I borrowed his for a couple of months and like, I'm um, good money now. <laughs> well, I'm okay now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got to play some Street Fighter in Japan last year. Yo, I went out to a place called Akihabara. Yeah, bro. I was, I was there. there. I was in October. My man, my man. My man. So I was out there. I went up to uh, Tato Hay and just fucking well, grab my nuts and just bowled up, bro, and just had a little blast at the Japanese brothers there. Bro, the was, craziest thing about... Jam. I've been there twice, bro. The first time I went there, and it was... Oh, man, it would have been like 2016, and I, that's the first place I got... I, it was like on a stopover, but it was like a like a 15-hour stopover. So I was like, cool. I get on a train. I go straight to Akihabara, and I was just like in there. And the smoke that's in those arcades, eh? <laughs> like they're just sitting there smoking hard. And then the second time I went there, there was none, and I was like, "Oh, cool." And that was in October. But bro, the the oh man, it's just the vibe and the culture that they have in terms of arcades and and, and how serious they are about it. It's it's bro, I, man. I know if I lived over there, that's all I would do. I would just live in Akihabara. But, yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's heavy, bro. I love that place. Yeah. And then you go outside, you have a kebab, or you have something quick, and then you jump back in there, and then, yeah, you're good to go. And even, and they're all, now they're all, like, linked up. Like, I went in October, and now they're, like, like internet linked up between all the different arcades. It's fucking crazy, bro. Right. You haven't played... Oh, sorry, brother. Yo, I found this spot, though. I just found it last night. I just watched this dude's uh, YouTube, and he found this retro, retro place, bro. That's got all the. All oh, the you mean games. Super Potato, brother? Oh no, no! I'll have a look and check for you, and I'll send you the link. Super it's Potato. Out of, it's out of Tokyo. It's out of Tokyo. Okay. This... Out, the, out on the burbs there. It's, it's, oh. it's some place that I'd never heard of myself. So right. I went to Super yeah. Potato, and Super Potato was like their retro 
you know they have them but they were having they had virtual boys there they had everything bro they had the old school stuff and they were selling them like there was boxes and boxes of them they were just yeah. like yo do you want like yeah and i was like but then i was thinking if i bought one back yeah i'm just gonna let it sit and you know i would rather oh, yeah. grab it back and play it like you know but yeah it was fucking crazy they had like a pink they had a pink um a fully pink dreamcast it was for like mother's day or something like that it was fucking right, crazy right, right, right. Yeah, bro. Um, bro, have you ever played like um, street, like so? Your son's into Street Fighter Five. What, what, yeah. a, bro? Have you ever heard of like the competitive scene over here? Yeah, yeah. You into standing yeah. fierce, bro? I went, this yeah, thing? I went to one that they had last year at the uh, the Grand Library. Oh, bro, it's crack up. I turned up there. Everybody was staring at me. Like, what's he doing here? <laughs> but it was like, because uh, I followed on Facebook. Yeah. And uh, my son was interested, so I said, "Oh, let's go along. It's just up the road." And so. Yeah, nah, old uh, ghost chips and that. Like, yo, right. I follow that shit, bro. Like, no. like, like, bro, I like the games. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I like that shit, bro. Especially I'm, from out there at all, bro. I know like, right in the chat, there's Opti Optimus Day, bro. He's a new AM brother. And yeah, he, yeah, yeah, he yeah. runs everything. And he would, I bet, bro, he would be like, yo, Shay, come on, let's get on. Let's get on. Let's, yo, you can get on that commentary, bro, and go hearty. Oh man, yeah, I'd love, love, love to, man. I'd love to. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll definitely. But I got mad love for yeah, standing fierce. I went to one of their ones. Uh, you know, it was it was a cracker. <laughs> That's cool, late, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't really play competitively. Like, I'll yeah. go and just vibe out and just yeah. watch people, and it's like, I, I, I just love the thing. It's kind of like uh, how I, I also like get into sneakers. I just like the community yeah. sort of side of it, and in particular, I like the Kiwi sort of side of it. It's, it's different. Like, we do obviously we do shit different here. So I always like, uh, and because most of the content that I consume is is YouTube stuff from overseas. Yeah. So whenever I see Kiwi shit on, on their vibe, like, yo, that's me, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? How'd you get into sneakers, bro? How did I get into yeah. it? Yeah. When did you uh, first realize, yo, I'm basketball, a sneaker? bro, for playing ball. Yeah. Playing ball, bro. Like, yeah. Uh, as a teenager at Sidon, bro. Yeah. So uh, fourth form, I guess, uh, after the 88 dunk comp, uh, yeah, that, that, that sort of became like a famous story. Uh, amongst my friends, uh, pr primarily my Mormon friends, yeah. they had strong uh, links to America, so they had all the tapes, all the all the gears, all the all the sneakers and that. So we'd be like, "Wow, well, yo, that, what's that?" Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, from there, yeah, it's so, so from basketball. Because I mean, Pack Heat is. Uh, I've been to a couple of Pack Heat uh, events, and yeah. bro, it's the shit. Like, you just walk around, you're like, "Fuck, look at this, bro!" Like, I haven't seen this shit for ages. And I love that shit, bro. Like, uh, yeah, I haven't been, I mean, with COVID and stuff like that. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, man, I love the stuff that you and Fo and 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 Fo and all those dudes are up to, bro. It's the shit, bro. And and bro, when I was coming up, there was nothing like that. Like, I love sneakers. I'm bro from my first pair of J's all the way till now. Like, yeah. I'm just yeah, I'm all about that life. But um, so so what 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 silhouette uh do you do you mess with? Uh, bro, like, are uh, you mean like? What number, Jordan? Yeah, bro, I'm a, I'm an eleven, dude. Hold up, Hold oh, up. Yeah. I, I'm a fucking ho yo. I'm gonna show your ass. Something. Oh shit! <laughs> I got some elevens. I got uh -oh. some elevens right here, brother. Uh -oh. We got them. We got them. We got them cool gray joints. What else? Got them got? things. I got them. But um, yeah, elevens and fours are my jams. Oh damn. Cool. Yeah. Because uh, like, so you, you jam ball, uh, bro. Because there's like, what's the one? Is it is it Toll Reserve behind uh, Summer Street? Uh, Toll Street, that's that's further on down. So I guess the local court that we would rock at would be uh Belden. Belden was our was our court that we would rock at on the regular. I guess Belden and Grayland. So Grayland Park down the back there, they used to be uh they used to be Jack Kwan's corner, bro. Yeah. So a piece to the bro, bro Jack. Uh so him and his brother Mike, they used to rock that one down there. Uh but I guess the 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 real place that we all congregated at was Youth Town, bro, Boys Town. Yep. So that's where we would ball for Lindsay and Tui and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Lindsay's uh, mom and dad, and, and uh, the best. even the even before that used to be run by a guy called uh, John Matafel. So he used to run it back then. But back here's then, a, here's a know, question for you, bro. You know, How many times have you seen Robson had a fight, bro? <laughs> yo, Dr. Oh, Robson, yo, he gave me his jersey. He gave me one of his jerseys. Like, Fuck, I was bro. like, yo, give me one of those jerseys, man. So he gave me one of them jerseys. Like, yo, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one, bro. Shout so peace to all the old ballers, bro. Peace <laughs> to all the old ballers. 
bro, yeah, here's a story love- for you, cuz I was yeah. <laughs> I was on um I was on the I was assistant coach, bro, for the under 17 New Zealand team, right? And uh, we we were heading over to Aussie, bro, to play uh, Australia best of three. You know, whoever gets to whoever you know top uh, best of three goes to uh, Worlds, bro. And we have uh, Ty Winyard, bro. Uh, you know, West Auckland boy, and uh, Ty Winyard blocks. So and, and we're like, oh, we need a run. We went down to Youth Town. We had a run, and Robson's there, bro. Fuck. And our little point guard gets fucking hammered on the screen, right? Oh yikes! But then on on a Robson screen, he rubs the take because he bro, he's hit some hard strings, you know. Boom! It's and, huge, bro. It's like a monster, bro. Bro, he falls Come over on. like trying to. I don't know what he what Robson was trying to do, my G. He hmm. bro, he falls over, and then the, the ref didn't. You know, he just let it play on. Bro, Robson straight up. This kid is like fifteen years old, bro. <laughs> Robson kicks this kid in the face, bro. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> and we're like Wilson, what are you doing, bro? We gotta go. Oh. We gotta. Uh, uh, and I think he just like it was like an automatic reaction. And uh. he was like, oh shit, bro! I'm so sorry, brother. I totally forgot because the kid's a big dude. But then uh, Ty Winyard comes over and he's like, "What the hell's going on, bro?" I was just like, and that's totally Robson. And yeah, yeah, he's the man, though. I got a lot of love uh, for Robson. Tim, you you cold man for putting on blast on here, bro. bro I'm not the only like man I hope I hope homie don't watch this, bro. Because like, you know, man. <laughs> nah, actually, I won't actually shit. I might show up at my house. Shit, he knows where I live. That guy knows my mum. He, yeah. <laughs> he'll find salute, out. Salute. Yeah. But yeah, bro. Um, so yeah, bro. What what's what uh what silhouette do you get down for, bro? Me, bro. Oh, I guess I'm a, a bread four guy, bro. So yeah, I mean, we we call them eighty nines. Oh, you, you do know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's what we would call them because we didn't. Hey, we're just fobs, bro. So when when the shoes came out, it was what year is this? Eighty nine, eighty nine. Like and so yeah, that's what we call them. It wasn't so I guess until this the last decade since all this whole sneaker thing started like popping off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Did we ever call it its, its uh, proper name? But uh, yeah, the bread four was yeah. uh, that was kind of like the first sneaker I bought with my own money, like saved up for, uh, and it was not cheap, bro. And so uh, that was an 89, obviously. Uh, before then, the actual first sort of pair of uh, sneakers of merit that I would say was like mean was like uh, the Nike Court Forces, which is... Uh, yep, I got paid them. Right, right. And so those, during that period of time, sneakers was crazy. I had to give it up to cats like uh, Aaron Cocker, uh, dudes like... Uh, uh, Oh, like uh, Cyan Mace cultural funk guys. You know what I mean? There were dudes in our neighborhood that was like super fly. And they had like these things called uh, the David Robinsons. Do you remember yep, those, yep, bro? Those, them high top ones, right? Well, the high the, the high ones, I think, were the flight solos, but okay. they had a three-quarter cut and it wow. was called uh, the Air Force Force. And so I don't know what it was, but in my area, they, there was just a massive, uh, a whole bunch of them floating around, man. And they were like... Uh, basically all one color with a white tick. So you would have like uh, purple ones, orange ones, green ones. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. They were real fire back in the day. I I haven't seen them since. Uh, I remember that dude, Zane Lowe, you know what I mean? He he rapped about it one time in his, one of his rhymes. I always remember that he had his, the last line when I had orange sneaks like Fanta, you know what I mean? And there were these crazy orange, David Robinson's man, and if you, even if you Google it, it's hard to find, bro. Yeah, so. bro. that's crazy. Yeah, like, yeah, because yeah, I mean, David Robinson wasn't the most because you know they, they they don't really market for big dudes, you know, or they yeah, yeah. that's what they said. So that would that would be pretty rare. Well, well, obviously the 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 marketing was also more intense stateside. So in the states, it's huge, but here we wouldn't get such ads. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So during that period of time, it was more so, like I said, I guess due to that. Uh, you know, the Mormon American connects and that sort of thing. Cause there was a store out here, like uh, out in the Mount Ross school, you know, there was a family store called the Kennelly's, the Kennelly's, you remember, remember nah, family, never. the Kennelly family. And they, they had links to a factory and uh, wow. they, they would have crazy gear, bro. We would go out to their crib. And uh, I remember buying some Cal sneakers and they had crazy jerseys and whatnot. Wow. And so I know there's people out there that know about this place. So, uh, let me know in the comments if you remember the Kennelly's, oh. yo. Yeah. Um, bro, because what was your first pair of J's? So uh, first pair of J's was uh, Bread 80, 4. Bread 4? 89, yeah. And then after that was uh, the 5s. And then by that point, 
uh, the sixes were just too crazy for me. And the sevens were just too crazy. And so then I started branching out, branching out into other, you know, other, other yeah. types of basketball sneakers. Uh, then I traveled the world, did that world tour, grabbed heaps of crazy stuff. And then I did that trip back to New York and we stayed out there for a minute. Oh, yo. So we'll go out to like uh, the place that you would go to get gear still to this day would be uh, Fulton Mall out in Brooklyn. And they had the crazy uh, Habibi stores with all the, oh. all the mean sneakers and that. <laughs> uh, and so that was a crazy time. And then I guess it wasn't until maybe like the mid early 2000s when I started actually messing with the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, way more. I was, I was I was a real late adopter of that, and uh, and I started uh, buying stuff online. You know what I mean? I, I thought it was a crazy concept it's that Eastbay, you could right? get that you could get. Well, actually, it was fake shit. I didn't oh, even yeah. know. And so, like, I was like, "Wow, you can get Jordans oh, for like sixty bucks with SpongeBob." With SpongeBob. Oh, awesome! SpongeBob. Awesome! I was like, "Mean, that's crazy." Because <laughs> I, I I didn't even understand that. The shit was bullshit. I didn't even really get it. Like you know, I don't know why, but didn't really understand until I got them, got them, uh, the the sneakers, and like you know, put my foot straight through it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and like, like, ah, I get it now. This is <laughs> shit. Like, ah, uh, so the penny dropped, right? And so, uh, and that whole sort of process of of finding out legit stores, and that's how that sort of game started happening. And so, by that period of time, that's when I really got seriously into it. Also, uh, it was also a vice for me because um, funny enough, me and uh, your, your bro Shan would, uh, would try to give up smoking cigarettes. And so when I worked, <laughs> I tried to give up before, but actually when I tallied up how much money it was and I, uh, I calculated how many Jordans that meant. <laughs> yo, that's a great idea. <laughs> yo, 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 yo. And so then I started uh, trying to use that as I guess another uh, more healthier way of, yeah. uh, you know, spending money yeah and so that also uh kicked me uh kick-started me into getting heaps of jays online and it's just been crazy ever since you know what i mean like they release craziness all the time and so yeah off the back of that i guess social networking and hooking up with other guys that were the same you know basically same age and into the same sort of shit you know what i mean we started exchanging photos and we post photos like yo how about these you like these blah 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 and that whole sort of thing's sort of uh snowballed bro and then you get these facebook groups and whatnot and then um i guess going to these functions a few of us older guys were like oh man like it's cool i love it man it's great and i do you know sincerely do uh one of the best things about this whole sneaker culture it's got nothing to do with the sneakers for me because without the sneaker culture i'm still going to be buying the shits you know yeah. what i mean yeah, yeah, but yeah. uh but the thing that i love about the culture is the people bro like just being able to, like just i don't know, nerd out about some bullshit you know yeah. what i mean it's been really really good so i love that aspect of it and so i guess a few of us older guys you know we like to talk our shit and so you know that's how pack heat sort of formed and you know what i mean we've been uh, putting on events and so forth Yo. and uh, yeah man i'm not, i'm like I i'm one of these purist guys right i don't I get sneakers. Like I will get as if Jordan wore them, i I'm like instant. I'm like, yep, yeah, I'll get that. Yeah. But if it's like some crazy fucking rainbow shit, you know, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, 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 nah. Like the Toro <laughs> Fours, for example. Dope shoe. Yeah. Don't get me yeah. wrong. One of the dopest yeah. like holy shit, this thing's all red. And then yeah. I was like, eh, did Jordan really wear it? Uh, I don't know if I'm Oh, dropping. sure, sure. I get what you're saying. I'm like that. I'm that guy. Like so I'll just get... like pure retros? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I can right, right, find right. a photo that Oh, Jordan wore those? Like, um, the shattered backboard once. I was like, hey, what the fuck? And then you, you look at the video when he shattered the backboard, and you're like, oh, okay, yeah, oh, yo, I'll try and cop those. I oh, didn't, yeah? You I like that shit? I didn't oh, cop right, them. Right. <laughs> I was like, yeah, they're, they're arm and a leg right now. Oh, but I, I, I hear what you're saying, bro. I hear what you're saying. Like, like for me, like, traditionally, I wouldn't, <laughs> fuck with, I wouldn't mess with anything uh, unless it was a three, a four, or a five. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, wouldn't even mess with anything for years. Only until, like I said, that sort of uh, early 2000 period, I, I looked at a seven. I never would mess with a seven, but the Bordeaux just had me a kind of way. And like, yeah. I remember when they came out originally, and I, ne I never liked them. I thought there was too many colors because I just like black sneakers. That's all I was about. But mm -hmm. uh, like I say, I, my, my tastes have genuinely uh, 
changed, uh, I guess. I mean, I never used to mess with 11s or 13s or, you know what I mean? Uh, but hello, here I am. Yeah. <laughs> Plenty of uh, 13s. <laughs> yeah. but, but, uh, bro, do, you, do you mess with anything above a 14, bro? Above a 14? Uh, let me think. No, nah, not really. I got no, one. No, no, not that I think. Uh, nothing comes to mind. No, not at all. No. The only one exception for me is the 16. I love the 16. Bro. Well, my son loves the 16, you know, yeah. with the uh, with the shadow uh, flap on it, uh, trap thing on it. There we uh, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when I, I actually bought it for his uh, 18th birthday, because that was his grail. Man, oh, it was bro. arm and a leg, too, bro. It was arm and a leg, bro. Which ones do you get? The black and red ones? Oh, sorry. Hang on. Am I thinking with the, yeah, the one with the, shra- yeah, the shroud? Yeah, the shroud on it. The shroud. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at the. Yeah, I bought him the black ones. Yeah, the black uh, with okay. the red sort of uh, teeth at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I got like a right now. I got a pair like these blue ones. I oh yeah. These, yeah. The I, blue uh, and white ones, like the like the like flints. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are the ones. And uh, bro, I uh, man, the, um, and even the cherry blossom one. Oh, the cherry, the cherry ones. I, I'm, yeah, I get yeah. down with those. But anything about uh, anything under fourteen, I'm like nah, bro. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not keen on that. Yeah. Yeah. I I got my manager the the chutney ones or the curry colored. Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. One time, like you gotta understand. Like, uh, I, I was sponsored by Jordan Brand for a few years. Fuck. What a yeah. flex guy. You yeah, know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Here I am spending all these kids uh, and old shades over here. Like, yo, can you yeah, hook a brother? Up? How did that work out? Uh, that was before. Uh, way before I, I uh got on the internet though, and. Even still, I was with oh. Jordan Brand. I still bought, you know what I mean? Because there were some things that they didn't even know about. Like, not to disrespect that, but there was a disconnect between. There's not so much now, but there was a little bit of a disconnect between the real sneakerheads and and what the the dudes at uh, you know the stores were doing. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I uh, I got put on. Must have been like 2000. Uh, one of the good homies, uh, uh, the homie Mike. Uh, he uh, approached me like uh, I was just at a store out in Henderson and I'm hardly out there to be honest I don't know what, I, what the hell I was doing out there but I was at a Sterling Sports out there just looking at some sneakers dude come up behind me he was like yo he was like you like those I was like yeah man of course <laughs> oh. and he was like you know you want some I was like oh this is some freaky like you know what I mean some you know little weird thing that's going on here because <laughs> nah you know come out to Platinum out in Victoria and like we'll sort you out and so I went out there and then, yeah, yo, he was true to his word. And then, you know, from then on, like, uh, I was the first non-sports person to be sponsored oh. by, by uh, Nike and then um, purely Jordan brands. And so I was with him for a few years. I was really, yo, it was pretty. pretty That's stoking. Leon. Is that Leon uh, Haiku? Leon? Leon, you know, Leon. Um, you mean last? now? Like currently? The yeah, guys yeah. there? Was, was there oh, no, 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 bro. He was way back in the day. It was Leon. Gotcha. Even even Charles, bro. Charles was there for a while. Or, uh, fat one? A fast one? Or, no, fat oh, one. yeah? Yeah, he was there yep, for Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the guy that I was working with was Mike Bruce. Peace to Mike Bruce. Oh, che. He was uh, he was the head there. And, uh, yeah, he's now moved on. And they don't do that no more. They stopped that a while ago. But uh, I think they stopped that. The last thing I got from them was uh, Space Jams. I think 09. Oh, yep, yep. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, man. Because like I was into it, and then when all the reseller dudes, when there was no laws about it, like sure, people sure. used to just come up and and buy like ten pairs. I'm like, fuck, this yeah, is yeah. ruining it for me. Yeah, then, it's yeah. crazy town now. Yeah, it's a little bit out there now. All right, bro. We better get into some, bro. We could talk sneakers all night, my dude. Where, bro? But we can't. <laughs> like, we can, but we can't right now. We got to get yeah. into these uh these questions from the from the chat. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, um, no doubt. Nortelica from uh from out in the uh in the wop wops and Waikato says, uh, what's your favorite topping to put on a sausage sizzle, bro? Uh, uh sauce and onions, my G. Yeah, no, no mustard. You're not a mustard guy. Nah, nah. All right, my son we... is, but no, I mean, well, just what I'm here. Shout out to, to Fiasco. Is that Fee? Yeah, that's Fee. Yes, is that Fee? Oh, you want to see Fee? Yeah, what's up? Well, she's uh, she's expecting, brother. Oh, where? Yeah. Oh, congratulations. First one, where, where? She, she keeps right, blaming it, she keeps blaming everything on the baby, though. She's like, now, oh, early on, when I saw my lyrics come out, I was like, damn, I was like. Man, I better write some good shit, bro. <laughs> well, like, well, hey, um, hey, what's up? <laughs> Fee was like, uh, yeah, yeah, there we go. Because, uh, yeah, Fee's back from the old old school Twitter days for, for me. We used- oh, word. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, next question from yep. uh, NZ Jedi. He says, what artists have you enjoyed working with the most, bro? Oh, man. 
Oh man. Um like so many different reasons. I have the I have a lot of fun with King Caps. But that's not necessarily like because we're making good music. <laughs> yeah. like, we, we spend too much time like talking video games, toys and stuff. So I guess I have the most fun with Wolf Caps. I have to say it's we hardly get any work done, let's be honest. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, peace to my man. Yeah. Uh, Fee, Fee, Fee says, uh, <laughs> what's your favorite PlayStation game, bro? Favorite PlayStation game? Uh, are we talking all time? All time. I've already said that, like uh, with uh, Joan Alone, uh Final Fantasy VII. Of late, it has to be... Uh, uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 uh, get at me uh, love that game just because I'm old and I'm playing lasers pew, pew, pew. Yeah. I like that shit uh, and also Minecraft uh, with my oh. kids uh, split screen four ways man no. best time I know best man time. I, yo I set up uh, um, while we're on there uh, over the lockdown eh, I set up like a little server for, for the house and we built this town bro and every like from Bro, my, the missus was on till like five in the five in the morning, bro. Just trying to make her own little town, and all my kids were out here, bro. It, was, it is legit underrated. One of the funnest times I've had on a, on a video game with my family. Yeah, respect, man. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Uh, just with my kids, you know. I mean, I really enjoy playing with them, and uh, we have like real adventures. It's messed up. It's messed up. It's yeah. cool, bro. And play the new one, bro. The dungeons one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, just recently, my son just won't give off it, man. And he hounds me. Can you come play with me? Can you come play? With me? I was like, yo. But yeah, yeah. It's, it's not too bad. It's different though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. it's more of like an RPG kind of uh, hack and slash, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah like a like a uh, Diablo or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, next question, bro, from Wolfie. What's your go-to uh, fish and chip order, bro? At the ship, fish and chip shop. Fish and chip order, yeah. man. I'm a fish chips and a better sausage, bro. That's it. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to like you know keep that shit in check, bro. <laughs> yeah, because when you go too hard out on the extra stuff, you 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 ring it up. You know, you get a pineapple. Bro, fruit. right here, it's all hard out, bro. It's all hard out right here. Like we're trying to change. We're trying to change. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, bro, just for kicks, bro. He's a uh, he's a custom sneaker guy over in Melbourne. Oh, oh no, in uh, Gold Coast, man. Oh, where? Yeah, yeah, he's good. Great follow on um, Insta, by the way. Uh, he says, "What's your Grail sneaker, bro? That you haven't got?" My Grail sneaker. I've got my Grail, bro. I'm good money, man. What I, I kissed that goodbye, man. Like, yo, uh, my Grail was uh, the Black Laser Fours. Yeah, yo, yo, yo. So I did stock a pair of those. I, I, I uh, tracked some down after a while, like maybe after like five years, five or six years, mm -hmm. trying to trying to get at them. Bro, uh, this, it's funny you mentioned that. And I'll tell you why. I'm like, you know, I'm I, I'm a teacher, right? And so, like, this kid rocked up with a pair. I don't know how he got them in. I don't know if they were legit, but they were laser dub zeros, right? Oh yeah, going black way ones. back. But like, this is like we're talking the black and the blue ones, the OGs. Oh, yeah. Bro, he rocks up to them, and I was like, yeah, damn, bro, where'd you get these lasers? Where'd you get these from? Oh, bro, my 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 dad bought. Bought them for uh, way back. I'll bring my other ones in tomorrow, bro. Man. Every every day he'll just bring in all these J's, and I'm like, fuck, they were all legit. Mm. Um, right. Yeah, bro. Um, anyway, uh, bro, have you got any like weird grails that you're like, yo, like not J's or anything like that? Oh, uh, any any non J's? Yeah, man, of course, man. Like, uh, uh, I just caught me the reverse duck camos. I've been out because I missed out on the first duck camos. That's the MX nineties. Yeah. Uh, I mean, okay, my dirty secret, man. I got a dirty secret, man. Yeah. My dirty secret is Yeezys, my G. <sighs> yep. I got a pair of uh, twos because, like, uh, they're comfortable, G, I have to say. A uh, pair of Wave Runners, they're, they're, yep. they're different, I guess. Uh, uh, some Shell Toes. So, yeah, yeah, I don't have uh, – the, the only other ones are Adidas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Bro, do you feel weird wearing chucks, bro? I do. I, can't I, wear I, I, I have a pair of chucks, a black pair of leather chucks. Yeah. And those are, you know, I love those. Okay, I, I'm not a chucks guy, yeah. but I like the classic look of the the black leather chuck. Yo, and like when I have to do like, because like in my, in my line of work, I've had to, I guess, play in different sort of groups with different types of music. You know what I mean? Uh, in terms of performances. Yeah. And uh, the Chuck saved me <laughs> for yo. a couple of these rock shows that I had to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And yeah. like, uh, yo, man, I, 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 I'm not a Chuck's guy, but I love my 
black leather chucks. I got my grails, bro. I went to New York. I had to get my right. grails. Where'd you I, go, bro? I went to um, just Flight Club. Just go ooh, to Flight Club. Ooh. I went to right, I like that. I, he just dropped that. Like, yo, hey. just Flight Club. All right, bet. Bro, I, I'm, I don't know if you know this about me, Shay. I'm a big deal, okay, mate? <laughs> Imagine. I was at the uh I was in uh, I, I did uh, like a stint over with the Sixers, bro. I, I was over there with their camps and stuff like that. Oh snap. So I went over there for bro, I went there and I went to UNC, bro. I was at UNC for a month, brother. Awesome. And I, I was just I bro, I just hung out with Roy Williams and just listened, just Ooh. went to his trainings and Ooh. was just in awe, bro. That whole place is Jordan Shrine. If you ever want to go, it's in the middle of nowhere, UNC. It's in fucking in North Carolina, obviously. But um, anyway, I was in, I was working in, um, like I was doing some camp stuff for the kids' camps. So that's how I went there, and I got to, and then you know we we're in Philly, so that's only a good two, three hour drive to New York. So I went to New York, and I picked up a pair, and these are like things. I, I love LeBron; he's the man. So I got two pairs of Air Zoom Generations. I got the uh, St. Vincent St. Mary's and I got the uh, the first games the, and it cost me a pretty penny. But I was I was keen. I was like, fuck, I got to do it. Damn, that's crazy, bro. So you're talking about the PEs? The PE, oh, the, 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 no, 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 not the PEs. I got the, the, they were like released. They were the re-releases, you know, because they, they, oh, oh. it was like 2000 and I think maybe. So say it again. Like, you mean, are they the fours or the? No, the first ones. There's Air Zoom generations. The oh, I got you. Oh, yeah, I got the you. The Hummer looking ones. Oh, dope, dope. Yeah, those are mine. Because I got the great. wheat. I got the wheat ones. I got the black ones. And so I needed to get the first games, even though you didn't play in them. But I was like, yeah, yeah I'll grab those. And those are like five spots. Yeah. Let me ask you, man. How did you find the service at Flight Club? Bro, I loved it. They were great to me. Oh yeah. Yeah. Damn, you got a good day. It was busy though. It was hella oh. busy. But the guy that served me, he was the man. Like, yeah. oh damn, yeah. you got a good day. Because we went to day. Stadium Goods, and that was cool. Yeah. Then it, they just didn't have what I wanted, and then uh, yeah, yeah. What's their selection like? I've never been there. Oh, uh, very. Oh, both of them. I mean, compared to what we have over here, it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, Flight Club's huge. But Stadium Goods, how was that? Was that was, the same sort of amount, or was it smaller? Uh, probably a little bit less, but not oh, too yeah. far off. Yeah, it, it was. It wasn't as big as uh, what it is. Oh, and I got my Spider Man ones. That's the other one I got. Oh, nice, yeah, nice. Yeah. I got the premier yeah, ones in the in that uh, in that purple uh, box. So I was like, oh, oh dope. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's right from the cartoon. That's yeah, dope. Yeah, because yeah. bro, I love that movie. That's one of my favorite. Movies. Oh, absolutely. I feel you. We haven't even talked about comics, bro. I feel Where? like we've done that. But anyway, back to the. <laughs> bro, here we go off there. Uh, what's your what's your um what's your opinion? This is from Fee again. What's your opinion on uh play peas? And uh, yeah, what's your my opinion? Yeah. I my opinion says, give me your PEs, man. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yo, I love them shits. Like, yo, that's my opinion. Like, yo, I want them. Like, uh, yeah, if you don't know out there, like, PEs are uh, player exclusive uh, sneakers, uh, really hard to get. They're usually in very limited numbers, and they usually have some sort of exclusive uh artwork on there or different crazy colorways or materials so very very highly sought after so player exclusives would mean like say like uh for uh like kobe of course he has some player exclusive threes rest in peace and uh yeah you yeah. know what i mean it's like yeah hard to find what was, real um, exclusive. all right let's flex what what peas you got me i don't really have any peas i don't Ooh, wow. I, I don't i've got more like i've got like hard to find stuff but pe's are more like yo that's like team sort of stuff yeah i've got sort of stuff that's maybe sort of like pe's in terms of exclusivity but not pe's per se okay yeah. um because i've seen phil's and i'm like god damn <laughs> like, yep. i've seen some of his pe's and i'm like fucking hell yep yep like, he's got the uh, what's it the Quentin Richards. Yeah, he's got the Q Rich stuff. Twos, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, this is from Wolf Gaming in Wellington. He says, uh, what's the best place to learn about uh, Jamaican culture? Well, obviously, Jamaica is the first <laughs> one. Uh, but around here, obviously, we can't get out and about. But uh, there is definitely uh, online, bro, is the best. YouTube, bro. YouTube's really good. There's quite a lot of content on there. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'd say YouTube online, man. Uh, there's also the odd uh, reggae evenings, depending on where you live. I know that they have them up here in Auckland, and they'll be steadily starting up. And so, yeah, I'd check the gig guides for reggae shows. And um, 
check out on YouTube, bro. Google, uh, I'll, I'll give you a good one, man. Uh, if you don't know about the uh, Jamrock boat uh, trip, man, that's a good little way to have a look at the Jamaican culture in an interesting sort of manner. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a thing that's called the, uh, oh, the, uh, the I'm sure it's Jamrock. Uh, uh, it's the boat tour anyway, where they have uh, uh, heaps of acts that go on, that go on a boat for over a weekend and travels from oh. Florida to Jamaica. Oh. And they have all the craziest reggae artists on there and it's put on by Damien Marley. So that's a, that's a good one to check out if you want to have a look. All right, bro. This one's for Nortelica. Nortelica is a big toy collector as well, just like yourself, brother. He's uh, he's the man. Uh, his one is, well, who's your favorite Transformer between Blast and Soundwave? Oh, Soundwave. Soundwave, easy. Oh, I suppose being a hip-hop dude and, yeah. Uh, for me, it's the voice, bro. Oh, yo. Yo, Soundwave got their voice, their Cylon voice. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen a video that I did uh, for a song called Top Floor. We were speaking about Top Floor before. But I did this video for it, and then it like uh, I animated like a sound wave character. Yeah, you know what I mean. I did it myself. I learned in a night on a, a program called oh, man, what was it called? Uh, it was just before Houdini. Oh man, I can't. It's been that old. It's been that long. But yeah, I I, uh, I animated a sound wave character, so I'm gonna have to say sound wave. Yo, man. All right, bro. Here's my quick fires, brother. This is this is when the truth comes out, mind you. Okay, this is when this is oh. when you go. Oh shit! Tim's oh, done shit. his t- Tim's done his research. All right, these oh, are the yeah. ones. All right, we start off easy, brother. Okay, what's the best bakery you've ever been to? Mmm, that's a good one, my G. Uh, the old Salmon Bakery in Grayland. Uh, yeah. Sorry, Crescent. It's no longer there, man. We miss you's, man. But yeah, that one. What's the uh, What's the pie? What's the go-to pie? A steak and cheese, B. Yeah, bro, thank you. I get guests on and they say mince or mince of cheese. I feel like... Whoa, 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 whoa. Throat punch. Oh, yeah? Just nah, push. nah. I don't know that, man. Like, and then, bro, even last night, even though P Money was like... Oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. Come on now, man. Hey, hey. That's my boy, man. Hey, come on. <laughs> I, I'm just going to be real. He said... My man, my man, my man. But you know, that's... Play, you know, steak and cheese, that's, that's playing with my emotions, my bro, G. Like, yeah. I know. Bro, I'm a steak and cheese man myself. <laughs> What's the best steak and cheese pie you've ever had, bro? Was it from that bakery or from somewhere else? Uh, it would have had to have been from that bakery, but I have to, I don't know, special mention to the Herm Bay Bakery. They're crazy out there, bro. Yeah, and uh, and, uh, Jim was there. Like, yo. I'm doing I'm doing a series, bro, on um, on YouTube and uh, with uh, my bro Will that works at uh, for Re and uh, TV and Z. Okay. And we're going out to all these different bakeries and we're getting recommendations, bro. And I take people out, bro. Would you be interested, my G? Yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll, we'll, yeah, yo, yeah. We'll, I'll take you. I got to take you out to Clendon, my bro. All right. Have you heard about Clendon? I, I feel it in the tone of your voice, bro. You should, because it's yep. probably the best bakery all right. ever. Okay. All right, bet. I'm cool. We'll go, I'm we'll keen. Go to your horns. We'll go to Hoon Bay. We'll come out right. to the hood in Clendon and we'll, we'll we'll put them together and we'll have I feel a you. Good... Okay, bro. All right. All right. Um, Challenge accepted. Yo. Okay, let's do it. What's the first piece of KFC chicken you grab out, bro? Thigh. Yep. Good man. I like that. Okay. I'm a breast <laughs> man, but bro, when All someone right. says drumstick or wing, I, I get triggered. That's not <laughs> that's not the way to go about that. Bro. Yo. All right. All right uh, do you have the pineapple on the pizza or nah? Oh, that's a good one. That shit can like make you uncool. I don't myself. Okay. Have you yeah. have you ever though? Oh, of course, yeah. of course. I'm a fob, bro. Of course. But uh, you know what I mean. Uh, I've been to Italy. I know how they feel about that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, sheesh, uh, bro. Like if if uh, you know the the if somebody knocks on your door and they say, "Hey, mate, we need we need a loop." From we need to loop one song to play in hell, brother. What song are we going with? <laughs> Damn, that's a good one, uh, bro. What's your oh. the Lucifer comes to your doorstep, bro? And he's oh, like, Oh shit, for bro. No, he's just Damn, like, he's son. just like, hey man, I, I know you've got some musical background. Give me one. Yeah, song yeah, I've got you. What's a good it? one, man? What's a good one, man? I mean, like for that. Like to like soothe you or to like nah. fuck shit up, like fuck yo. Shit up. Well, for well, shit. I have to say mm, off the top, uh, raid boy tribe. Oh, okay. There we go. Yeah. Fucking oh up. yeah. When you play that, bro. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on. We on. We on. <laughs> bro, what subject do you reckon they should teach in school that they don't? 
Uh, Pacific history. Yeah, boy. Fucking A. I like that. I like that answer. Uh, yeah. I've been, bro, I've been so hard into that lately with my, with yeah. my tamariki, bro. Uh, what smell makes you the happiest, my bro? Uh, the smell of takihi. It's like a Speaking, new end, this, bro. Speaking of that, bro, next question. Yo. Yo. Okay, explain to me. Okay, here we go. We've got the taki, ta, ta, uh, takihi uh, question right here, brother. Uh, describe the perfect takihi, brother. Oh, man. So the it all, it all comes down the mayor, uh, Because there's popo, there's mango. I've seen peaches on it. What's yep, the best yep, way, brother? It, well, so in, that, in, in regards to that, in regards to the fruit, it, it all depends on what you can get, bro. Because out in the city, you can't really get fresh popo. Yeah. You know, all the time. But of course, traditionally, it is the popo. But like, I'm, I'm from uh, Ponsonby, Greyland, bro. And we are in the streets, bro. And like the, the Auckland version, I guess, has always been the peaches, bro. But uh, for me, the integral, important part, brother, is the talo itself. Because it's so a we're different the talo. talo eh? Yes, bro. It's different talo. You know what I mean? From different places. And so just as long as when you scratch it and it's white, bro, you're good money, mm -hmm. G. Okay. Like, yo. All right, next one, bro. Explain the perfect strategy, bro, for eating uh, pitako, bro. Pitako? Oh, my gosh. That's a good one, bro. For me, like, uh, I like it with, uh, with corned beef myself, bro. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me. But, um, bro, have you ever had the ones that are like a brick to eat, brother? <laughs> I can hear you have, G. I have, my G. And I'm like, damn, I'm going to, uh, yo, I was in front of the in-laws, bro. And I was eating this shit. And I was like, Good bro, on you. Have what? you ever eaten pekka, bro? Kahore, brother. I have not. <laughs> That's one. There you go. When you open that brother up, bro, like this. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, bro? Nah. Bet. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. I got you. <laughs> like, I so when they serve it up, bro. That. When it comes up to you like this, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now I get it. Hey, hey, now I get it. I understand it. <laughs> like, yo. Oh, hey, that, that'll impress, impress the shit out of me, bro. Oh, like, fuck all these China <laughs> ones. With these China ones starting nah, all the... Nah, nah. with How about we eat? We, it's traditional, bro. We, yeah, we yeah. call it... Uh, Pekka, we call it Pekka. What about and like, uh, you got into the bush, bro, with like a string or rifle, obviously a rifle, but you go out there and you, and you go like this, bro. <laughs> you make this noise, bro. Catch them, bro. Eat them. What, a, what <laughs> about the old nanny, bro? Are you keen on the old porridge? Nanny? In the morning, bro? Oh, oh, you know what I mean? Like, I guess I'm one of those city, city islanders. Oh. Eh? My dad calls them traffic islander. <laughs> but yeah, but yo, uh, yeah, now I eat that, bro. I always give thanks, to be honest, bro. I always like when it comes to any food that anyone serves me, bro. Like, always give thanks, bro. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't, I ain't. Nah, we don't really have that on the regular. No. What's that? Is it, uh, is it? Kaifai Kaifaika is the one with the Kaifaika? is the coconut cream and the um and the fish. Oh yep, yep, that's one yep, that yep. I've had before, bro. Yeah, big yeah. fan, big fan. My bad. Yeah, brother. Uh okay, bro. Here we go. Is, bro, do you reckon that Killmonger is the best MCU villain? Killmonger. Oh, oh, I feel you, bro. I, I feel. feel you. I feel that you're you're. Killmonger Let's have a think, fan. man. Well, we're talking about MCU though, right? Yeah, yeah, just MCU. So, uh, yeah, Killmonger was pretty bad. I thought Jedediah was pretty bad. Uh, you know, uh, Jedediah yeah, from, from the Iron Man. The first one? Yeah, I thought he was a bit of a punk. Uh, yeah, I agree, man. Like, yeah, shit. I'd have to think about it a little bit more in depth to right. give you a, a straight up answer. But for now, yeah, I kind of like uh, 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 Killmonger. Was Jordan. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll tell you one that I honestly felt a little bit stink for was the old Vulture, mind you. Was the who? The vulture from the Spider Man one. Yeah, that was weak. That yeah, I feel you. Like but in terms of like, trying to make some money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, you mean in, in terms of that particular story arc? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. you know? But he did. He did kill that dude accidentally, though, right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Right. That was that was like yeah. He kind of like oh, oops. Yeah, like, uh, what was that? Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton. And yep. you know he, he he grabbed that stuff from the uh, from the first uh, the aliens. Movie. Yep. Yeah, and then all of it from the um, oh, what are they called? The uh, I forgot, I forgot them. Jadari, uh, yeah, yeah it's Jabari, Jabari. Jabari. All right, bro. Here's another one, brother. That's gonna make you go, oh, we. Tim's done his research. All right, all right. Do you think, bro, the MCU takes most of their storylines from Nick Miller's uh, Ultimate series, brother? Of course, of course. Fucking hell, it does, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Mike, Mike Miller, who Mike was the Miller, man, like, sorry. yeah, yeah, he's the man, bro, and like, I, I. I was a huge Ultimates fan, so I got all that shit. So then when the movie started coming out, I was like, hey. <laughs> I was like, hey, man. And so what people don't realize is that in this 
particular comic series, like uh, it was written by a, a guy from a Scottish guy. He's from Scotland. And so Marvel was like floundering. They were just trying to get out of being bankrupt because uh, all the comics were getting, were losing money because of all the whole sort of backlash of the variant sort of cover sort of saga that was going on. I don't know if you know about that. You know how they, they were trying to make uh, number ones like, you know, there, there, there was more valuable than the other comics. So they just started producing a lot more number ones. Do you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the same number one, but with variant covers. Yeah. And so there was a backlash to that. Basically everyone was like, nah, stuff that. And so to sort of re uh, ignite uh, energy into the, into the Avengers, they handed it off to this guy, Mark Millar. And I used to like read a lot of his earlier stuff that he did for, uh, that he did with a comic called the authority. I really love that comic, man. That was crazy. And so, yeah, he got given the the job of restarting and and resetting the, the origin stories for a lot of the uh, Avenger characters and the Avengers themselves. And uh, basically, stuff like uh, Samuel Jackson being drawn in as uh, Captain Fury, that was yeah. in his comic first. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was his idea first. So when I first looked at it, I was like, yo, this is fire. Uh, and uh, if you do read the series, the Ultimates is uh, a lot more darker than the movie ever was. Yeah. Like uh, the stuff on the Hulk when he goes, when he really rages out, he kills like, you know, like a city block. Yeah. You know what I mean? Thousands of people die. But you, but in the MCU, as you know, you can't really do that sort yeah. of stuff. So they kind the of Ultimates was it, way right? darker. Yeah. It was way darker. But there's know? still some inferences to that shit, you know? Like when he was in India, when they first found old Bruce Banner, and they're like, yo, you killed a lot of... They didn't say that, but you're like, yo, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a problem. Like, yo, I gotta be here in India. Yeah, well, there's also the relationship rift between uh, the Wasp and uh, the Giant. They split up and she goes married. Uh, she ends up being in a relationship with Captain America and all these other sort of weird things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's cool. I mean, I, I like how they've sort of paid homage to a lot of famous story arcs, like the Planet Hulk one. Yeah. You know what I mean? In, in, in uh, regards to Ragnarok. That, you know, that, that's kind of cool. Like the Infinity sort of Gauntlet series. Like, I love that comic, man. I, that was one of my, my things. You know what I mean? Uh, and so to see that sort of play out you know i loved it my sons were like you know shut up dad like, <laughs> like you don't know dad and i was like i told you boy I told you. <laughs> oh. like bro i got this comic hey the infinity gauntlet one man I, I i would leave it in the bathroom just so they would accidentally <laughs> read it but no but as soon as the movie came out as soon as the movie oh. came out they were like oh fine i'll say that i was like hey get away from me get away from me <laughs> anyway, you heathen you heathen <laughs> Yo, like, so, yeah, Civil man. War one. Like I, I read Civil War and I was like, yo. Yeah. And then when I heard it was coming out, it was like nothing. Oh, it was kind of, but it wasn't really like the actual series. I yeah, because yeah, yeah. I mean, there's supposed to be a massive rift between Black Panther and uh, Captain America. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh and the whole thing that happens in New York, bro. And that's another thing, because I remember reading for the third time, I read that comic in New York, and I'm like, yo, this is crazy. You know what I mean? But uh yeah, yeah. They, as you know, they always take a creative license when they do these remakes. Yeah. But even like, I mean, the first few pages of Civil War, bro, they like blow up a school. <laughs> like, I'm like, oh, okay, never mind. Remember the, hey, the Inferno guy got, yeah. Right. Did you ever see that uh, on another buzz? Did you ever see the X Men comic uh, with a, uh, with her in Auckland? No. Yo, yo, yo. I'll drag that out for you, bro. Please. Yo, that's good. Speaking and of X-Men, bro, I got my next yo, question, bro. Who's your spirit yo. X-Men, bro? Who are you? Spirit X-Men? Oh, Who Wolverine, bro. Yeah. I love that. Uh, yeah. Not not, not this new not, not this new guy one. that we know. I'm talking about the 80s version. Yo, <laughs> yo. That's bro. X-Men, though. But, uh, did yeah. Have, bro, did you get all the cards, bro, bro? The cards? No, nah, no, nah, I didn't. I, I missed that wave. <sighs> that was that was my wave, bro. Oh. The, uh, Fleur, the Fleur cards, the X-Men. Oh, my gosh. Oh yeah, yeah spent eight years and yeah, you know, just trying to find like certain ones. But the OG, oh the OG Wolverine, the uh, with the brown and the the, the yep. tan and brown. Was that was your jam? Uh for me, yeah, it was the and also the the Madripoor on the islands when he was Patch. Yo. Yeah, so he was a hitman for a little while for the Yakuza. That series bad. Oh yeah, uh, when he fights uh, the Silver Samurai the first time, and it's got all the it's got the famous scenes with him and uh, the ninjas and that. Yo, that I like that. I like that stuff. That was that was pretty cool. That would have been. I mean, when when the um, Wolverine came out when he was in Japan, that would have been like, oh shit, here they go. And then you know, it was good, but it wasn't like 
I mean, for yeah. you, it would have been like, for oh, me. Shit. I guess it was the period of time. Anything with a ninja in it, I was there. Like, Speaking you know of I mean? that, bro. Next yo, question, brother. Can yo, you name yo. me the five deadly venoms, brother? Five deadly venoms? Oh, you got me, G. Like right now, right to right my face. Right now, my G. Damn. Oh, I'll give toad. you the first one. Centipede. Yeah, centipede. There was toad. Oh, oh man. Oh man. Now you got me, G. I can't. I can't think of them right now. There's a scorpion, snake. Scorpion, snake, and lizard, brother, and toad. Oh, you got me, bro. I got you, bro. I thought I, I bet, I, you I know, bet. I, I got, I got to flex on you. A yeah, that's you know that's yeah. No, you got me, man. That's a little older. That's a little older. I guess I'm like a Sue Hawk type era, but oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, bro, Jackie Chan or Jet Li, bro? Who have the better career? Uh they're both different to me, but I have to say Jackie Chan only because he's the G. He's the OG. Jet Li's a little after. Uh, they're both uh, wushu. You know what I mean? Yep. Shoe schools. Uh, but you have to get up to Jackie because he's he 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 helped put the flag on the moon. You know what I mean? If if it wasn't for Jackie, it might not be any others. You know what I mean? It's so true. between Jackie and Bruce, like yo. So in Jackie's camp, there would have been Yu and Biao, and Jackie's older brother was Chow Yun Fat. Oh yep. no, so not Chow Yun Fat. Uh, uh, the the uh, sorry, Samuel Hong. My bad, my bad. Samuel Hong was uh, that's oh. the big guy. Yep. You know, yeah, and all yeah, the famous yeah, 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 big yeah. guy. So he was kind of like the older brother in terms of the school that they went to. Yo. He was like uh, uh, Jackie Chan's older brother. And then underneath Jackie Chan was an upcoming star called Yu and Biao. And got then it. many years later, Jet Li came. Yeah, you know we, I mean? we got another one in the in the chat too. Is uh, Donnie Yen. Bro. Yeah, bro. Hard. Yeah, that was the guy too, brother. Shit. Oh, hard, bro. Uh, I, a cool story is like one of my mates... Uh, he uh, actually met Donnie Yen a couple of years back and he said, Hey, bro, I got this dude, Shefu. <laughs> and like, and so they Googled me and I was like, Bro, give me a hug, bro. I was like, Thanks for that, man. Like, yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, man, Donnie Yen is a yeah, superstar, bro. Do you reckon that uh, Bruce, uh, Into the Dragon was Bruce Lee's like finest peak movie or do you think it was after that? Oh, yeah, no, I, my, 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 me personally, yeah, I love that movie, yeah, man. That's, that's my favorite, my favorite. Uh, favorite one. Uh, I love after that, I guess, Game of Death. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Bro, yeah. have you ever seen uh, Five Fingers of Death, bro? Five Fingers of Death? Yeah, with uh, King Boxer. I know the title. It's OG, bro. But I'm trying to think. It was like 73? I can't remember the movie. I, I can't remember the movie off my hand. Bro, I, I watched it. Uh, I watched it a while back. Bro, it is exactly, and you know, you might want to, it is exactly the same plot as Star Wars, my bro. Oh, yeah? It's it's uh, candy. it's uncanny, bro. I was watching, I was like, this is just Star Wars, man. But, like, uh, but fighting, you know? It was pretty cool. Um, bro, do you find uh, parallels between you and uh, Diggy Dupe, bro? Parallels? Yeah. That's the homie. Of, oh, I no, mean, that, that that's the homie. That's, like, he, he's from out here. Yo, uh, definitely holding the flag right. You know what I mean? Love, love dude. So, yeah, man. I think there's plenty of parallels. I knew him, my only boy from out here. Yo, it's... Yeah, that's the young G, man. Yeah, oh, brother. Um, bro, next one. Um, what's your holy grail when it comes to action figures or toys, bro? Oh, like what I haven't got and I, yeah, that I want? Bro. Oh, uh, ATAT or no. even an ATST. Really? Like, what, what, like a full? Yeah. Like, oh. oh, yeah. If I could get one, oh, that would be it. Okay. I'll be good money after that. Like, I got a Millennium Falcon. I got an X-Wing. That's the one I want. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah. I bought one of those, uh, I guess, one of the remake sort of thingies for my son. And we built that, and that was all good. But uh, no, nah, I wouldn't want an OG uh, Hoth flipping ATSC. Yeah. Hi, bro. Oh, um, I'm, yo, I'm, a, I'm, a star, I'm, I'm, I'm flexing on this one too, brother, with my research, okay? What's, yo. the, what's your favorite brown pair of uh, Jordans to wear in July, my G? Oh, my man. I, yeah, yeah, you yeah, yeah. You see me? I see you, bro. Brother? I see you. Salute to you, bro. Your, your history, uh, your knowledge of Rasta history is very good, my G. Oh, my G. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I'm a tribe of Judah, and the representative color of that month is brown. And so my man's on it, man. And so I actually bought a pair of uh, winterized sixes, bro. Wow. And they're brown suede. And so uh, those are the ones that I, 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 uh, I rock if I need to represent. Uh, uh, in my tribal colors, yeah. All right, bro. Uh, one more, one more question before we get into uh, the the battle zone, brother. Uh, oh, there's more. Th Damn, there's, bro. I've it's like we've shit. been talking about two days, man. Like, is bro. anybody left on here? Like, let's have a look, man. What's our numbers there, brother? 
Damn, I don't know, sir, because like, you know, on the screen that I'm talking to you, I can't see you. 140, to... 140 right now, my brother. All right, kia ora, kia ora fam. You know? Bless go. I actually, I'm actually quite surprised it's 140, to be honest. I'm like, damn, we're at 140, god damn. I was, <laughs> oh, well, shit. Uh... Uh, anyway, bro, initiation, what's the initiation to get into the hand, brother? Let me know. Ah, uh, my man. Oh, uh, you have to get uh, uh, vetted in, bro. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if uh, everyone's good with that, then then uh, I think you get like all you need is two votes. To be honest, I think it is. Okay, bro. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, hey, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll I'll work my way up. Okay. No, nah, bro, I, I I got you, bro. Okay, yeah, yeah, nah. bro, bro. We'll see. I mean, you already in with Shen, man. Like, okay, there you, we go. Do you play, bro? You play? Yeah, bro. I play a little. I play oh, a little all right. Okay, all right, 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 battle zone, bro. Here we go. I'm good. This or that, brother. Fire red threes or cement fours. What are you going with? Go choose um, one. Fours. Fours. Uh, Boba Fett versus Django Fett, bro. Who are we going with? Boba. Oh, yeah, my G. Uh, Batman and Iron Man. One out. Huh. Batman. And I'm a Marvel guy. I'm a Marvel guy. Heavy, heavy with it. But yo, that Batman, uh, Dark Knight, yo, yeah. Batman and uh, bro, you disappointed me on that one, Shay. <laughs> I, 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 I feel you though. I feel you though. I understand, but Let's be honest, I, I got to be honest. Is. I got to be honest. Yeah, yo, and I'm not even a DC guy. Never have been. Never have been. Fucking but if you're gonna say Iron Man and that guy, I'm gonna go Batman. Okay, um, bro. Uh, Deathstroke or Deadpool, bro? Oh, let's go to Deadpool. He's yeah. funny. He's funny as hell. And that's it, brother. That's all. Oh, but last one, bro. What's your favorite storyline? Like any Marvel, anything, bro, that you like to? Uh, I I got the uh, Galactus. I like the Galactus story. Yo, yo, how he came from the previous universe, came through. I like the uh, obviously the Infinity Gauntlet series, uh, the the real one where they bring in the uh, the real ob- omnipotent guys, like the uh, like the Living Tribunal, uh, the the In Between. Uh, uh, chaos and order. You know what I mean. If yeah. you know the comic, you'll you'll know what I'm saying. And so I like it for those aspects because, like, you can have your superpower guys, and then you can have these massive, like, you know what I mean, like yeah. out the gate guys. And I, I I like that aspect of it. Yeah. All right, Shay. For Kawaii Lahi, brother. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah. Shay. All good. Pleasure, pleasure, bro. Let's yeah. be honest. Let's be honest, Shay. Top, <laughs> top five, top five best interviews you've ever had. Oh, absolutely, bro. Top three? No doubt. Like, straight up. Sincerely. The most thorough, bro. The most thorough. Without a doubt, bro. I appreciate you. Thanks for doing the research, and I, I appreciate the support, bro. I can... I feel that shit. Uh, yo, shout-outs to you and yours, man. Uh, thanks for having me. Yo. All right, bro. We'll catch up soon, eh? Oh, bless, bro. Thank you, brother.